Well, sorry about that, everyone. I scheduled the live stream an hour early, and so I checked in on the, the live chat as I normally would in the morning, or before an hour before, and everyone's like, are you going live? And I realized I screwed up. So uh, you should have gotten your text notification now. It was set to be an hour from now. Well, not an hour from right now, but like 45 minutes from right now. And so, uh, yeah, my apologies. But we'll get us started anyway. So today, I was going to talk about uh, what I'm doing in the summer. Well, what everyone's doing this summer, but uh, mostly I want to focus on breeding fish again. I don't know if I'm going to do a ton outside yet. I might do kind of a white cloud race for members and that kind of stuff. No prizes or anything, just kind of some own clout. Um, but instead, uh, I want to breed inside. And so setting up brine shrimp hatcheries today, that's what I'm going to do after the live stream and really get things kind of booming again. And uh, had new fish delivered last night. We had a kind of campfire thing that we do. And uh, Robert brought me some Barbados Corydoras, which I'm looking forward to breeding again. And then also um, some guppies with um, uh, Camelanus redworm that I'm going to use Expel P. Uh, Robert's been able to treat it. And so uh, now I'm going to try and replicate it. And then we can rec make our recommendations with it. So that's what we're hoping for. Thank you to all the new members that signed up uh, throughout the week. I know not everyone gets a shout out, you know, during a live stream or anything like that, but uh, I do notice it and I do appreciate it. So, yeah, some new ones right now. Welcome, Connor and Mac. Um, yeah, so, going to answer questions, things like that. Uh, mostly, I'm looking for more live bears. I've been really looking on, on Aquabid, and the, the pickings are slim. I'm trying to figure out why. Um, like, the weather is the right temperatures now. Uh, I don't know if coronavirus has, like, actually had an impact. I kind of assumed everyone's stuck at home. They were going to breed an insane amount of fish, and then right now there'd be just tons to buy. But the only thing I can think of is that, um, um, like, the shipping's kind of crazy with USPS, which was always the cheapest method to ship. And so maybe shippers have been burned too many times right now, so not shipping a live fish. I don't know what's going on, but... You know, I've got probably 20 more um, totes to put fish into, and I'm not finding kind of species or, or variants that I want. And so I'm hoping more people are going to list stuff and I can buy. So I've been looking on eBay too, and obviously fish lists, but I'm looking for more hobby spread stuff because what I'm into is kind of the fancy live bearers. And, and so that's some of it makes it onto wholesale lists, but mostly it's, it's a, kind of a hobby driven thing. And so I'm always on the lookout. Hopefully it, it gets better because I got a whole fish room to, to fill. I did set up set up uh, like 22 auto feeders yesterday, so getting there. So I have them feeding a little bit every day, and then I'm going to come in and feed once every day at least. And hopefully that'll be live brine shrimp mostly, but then frozen foods also. So, yeah, and almost no rice fish on Aquabid lately. Yeah, it's it's super weird. I don't rice fish and right like rice fish, killifish, um, goodyids. All of those should be doing really well in shipping, even if they get delayed. So, um, I, I'm not sure why they're not being listed. Unless I don't, I can't, I can't explain why. It's like the perfect time. We had unlimited amounts of time stuck at home to breed, and uh, it's just not the the numbers aren't there. But maybe, okay, I can think of one thing. Maybe the breeders are selling to stores because it's hard to get fish into a store right now. So maybe it's maybe you got to go to your local fish store instead. Listening while you're on the mower. Nice. You must have good headphones. New members left and right. Uh, I've been listening to your old live streams on your app, and I love it. Also, I have counted like 20-something streams in a row that involve tacos. That could be if the old ones. The old ones talked about tacos a lot. That's why it's one of the, the, the member uh, badges. But, um, yeah, I guess I, I almost never mentioned that. We do have a, a dedicated app for iOS and Android that is basically our podcast. And uh, there, I think that's a little... What else can we do? Oh, it's a, you can have it be like a timer or an alarm. Um, I always threaten that we're going to like update it, but it's so expensive and costly to make an old, or a new dedicated app that right now it's kind of just a good place to download these live streams and the of course podcast live streams and you can kind of sit in the background have them auto download use it for planes they were i would use it a lot because i'd love to re-listen well, i don't have to re-listen to myself 
uh, while I'm playing, see like how was audio, how, you know, was there too much downtime? What didn't I like about it? Um, and then I would get to catch up on the Aquarius podcast because I just never have time in front of a computer. So when you're on a plane, then I got time. I'm going to make another plant tour. I lost my battle with MTS. So is that multiple tank syndrome or Malaysian trumpet snails? Hopefully it's multiple tank syndrome. We had a ton of libraries at one of the local club auctions yesterday. Dang. See, our club isn't doing anything in person yet. And uh, I kind of want to figure out a way to um, have a, well, like the, the uh, American Library Association, they have, I think they call it the E-Trader, I think. And it's where people can post up libraries for sale and, and trade. Uh, what I want to figure out is how it doesn't become just like a place for people to do business. So... I want it so that people would trade and yeah, like, oh, I'd love to get a pair of those. Like, oh, it's $10 for a pair plus $20 shipping, so 30 bucks. Like, that's, that's great. But I don't want it to be like, oh, someone's just setting up shop and they're farming all the members for like sales. Like, that's not the goal of it. And it's a hard thing to like prevent that. It's kind of like one of those things where you're like, look, just don't be, don't be that guy right now or that girl. Like, don't take advantage of the system where we have to shut it down. Instead, let's try to make this where it's a, you know, and the same thing. Like, I, <clears throat> I want to try and encourage, like, uh, Dean, like, hey, how about you send out fish once every six months? And, and, like, me too. Like, I'll be, like, I'm more willing to be a part of something than I am to do it for money. And so it could be like, okay, I'll post one group of this fish, you know, every few months, and I'll pick a different fish, and someone can, you know, watch the e-trader and they can get that but i'm not going to be like well i could sell three thousand of these fish and it's a monetary source for me because that that's not where i want to take it so have 15 percent of the profits go to the co-op that will limit business exploitation it wouldn't though people would just raise the price so for instance if uh if someone had let's say D dark knight rams let's play this scenario out right someone goes to a store buys dark knight rams they breed them and if Dean won't sell them, then you could sell them for like, oh, we're selling them for 75 bucks a piece. People would buy them all day long, unfortunately. And even though we get 15%, but the problem with that becomes we start becoming, the waters get muddied, I would say, in that um, it's muddied in the fact that if something goes wrong in the transaction, <clears throat> all of a sudden, well, Coin Co op got 15%, like, we could be sued or something. It's like you just get like a customer service will get sucked into it. And I want it to purely be like, there's two nerds. They go, hey, I have something. Hey, I'm looking for that something. Hey, let's find a way to make this happen without it being a huge ordeal. The minute it turns into this is nothing but problems, I won't want to be, I won't want to facilitate it anymore. So it's how do we facilitate like, it's kind of like, hey, I've got a friend here and a friend here. And they're both like, they're trying to, One's trying to sell this, one's trying to buy one. Hey, let's make that happen, you know. Everyone's talking about candy. I don't see what's going on. Did she, like, lose her mod ship or something? I don't see her. Maybe she's not. Maybe she's busy today. I don't know. She probably thought it was going at 11, just like I did. Why can I not see? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Got about 50 endler fry. How old, in general, do they need to be to sell or give to a local fish store? They are assorted. Any idea on how much I could sell them for? Um, so the best rule of thumb I've got for people is see what your store already sells them for and then try to get like roughly one third of it in credit. Now, they might give you more. They also might uh, give you cash. But in your brain, if you're going, hey, they're three bucks each, go, okay. In a best case scenario, I could probably get a buck. <clears throat> now, um, some some stores won't buy from you at all. Some will give you more, and we we've, we've and it's all like let's say you've got just normal endlers, right? And maybe they're only like there's a bunch of people breeding them, so like hey, I'll give you a quarter each because there's too many people breeding them. We're we're flooded on them. So the other part is, do they need them, right? Um, but then let's say you have orange line. Or let's say you have scarlet endlers and they're popular in demand, right? And they're going for 10 bucks each. You might be able to get $4 credit each or something, right? And it also, so you've got 50 fry. 
it's much more likely that a store might want 12. Something where they've got enough to sell, but they didn't spend $50 on it, right? <clears throat> what a lot of people don't realize in the fish industry is livestock is, um, it's not a guaranteed thing. Like this Easy Green, it sits on a shelf, and as long as it doesn't expire, it can't really go wrong, and it will sell. Fish, on the other hand, um, I could have an employee who accidentally puts the wrong, puts an angelfish in with those endlers, and they eat them, right? Could accidentally get them sick because we brought in some Corydoras, they made it through quarantine, but then they got sick, and they brought down the Corydoras, right? Or brought down the endlers. And so you have stores that might want to mitigate risk by, uh, you know, well, I'll take 12, knowing that I'll probably sell six. So, you know, think of it. If you got 50 and trying to sell them 50, and they bought 50 for 50 bucks, but they have, they only sell six pairs at three dollars each right so they sold 12 fish at three bucks each that's only 36 dollars they're still actually negative 14 dollars and you'd say like well they have all those fish fish are only worth something and when they sell and any breeder will tell you that like i have twenty two thousand angel fish like well you don't have any money until they actually sell and you keep them alive and they don't get sick and and there's still a bunch of um money outlay when it comes to selling a fish so you have you got to pay the employee to catch it you'd have to pay uh, to train the customer on how to take care of them and if if they were to kill them you might have to cover some losses so maybe you sell six pairs one out of those six has a problem you know you know it's the customer's tank but they've been a good customer so you're going to make it right so there's all those things that go into it but in general one third and the way we kind of structure the business is and most i think most uh fish stores try to structure it this way is one third goes into the price of a fish. One third goes into kind of maintenance and employees. So, you know, a dollar for a fish, a dollar to pay the person to sell it and to take care of it and to pay the rent and all of that. And then hopefully a dollar into investing. And that might be profits for an owner. That might be uh, buying new aquariums if they're, you know, tanks are starting to leak or whatever. Maintenance on the building could be to try the next, uh, the next batch of fry from the next customer, right? And so if you kind of deviate from that, it gets really tough. If you're only getting like you're paying a dollar and you're paying a dollar to the employee and the maintenance and the rent and all that, there's no profit to ever get better as a business. So um, that's that's why the one third usually will work for someone. And like with Dean, I think for Dean, uh, we pay quite a bit for the, the Dark Knight Rams because one, there's no one else doing it. Two, it takes a lot of care. And three, they sell almost instantly. So you might develop a rapport over five years where they know your product's in high demand and you can sell it to other stores, you're choosing to sell it to them and they're willing to reward you. Plus, if you've sold them endlers, let's say you sell them endlers every month, 50 of them, right? Let's say they're selling a lot. After a year or so, you might be able to go, hey, I'm gonna stop breeding these, I'm gonna breed something else more profitable unless you're willing to give me a dollar fifty store credit or a dollar fifty cash or whatever it's going to be, and they might say no, they might say yes, um, but you know, at the end of the day, if you are bored, because that's what happens with breeders or me a lot, is I might be breeding endlers and it's fun, and then after a year, it's like okay, I've done that, and it's not, I'm not, it's not like thrilling. I like that I'm making babies, but I really want to go play with uh, these mollies instead, and I only have two aquariums or whatever it is, right? So. Yeah, that's the best answer I can give you on trying to sell fish to a store and realizing that everyone in the chain has to be happy. You got to be happy. You got to make enough to cover your costs and your time. Uh, the store owner has got to make some money and they got to live for everybody. So the store owner has to do well with them and the customer has to do well. If every, all those are working, you'll sell a lot of fish. The members only live stream is getting crowded a little bit. Yep. Um, we've got some plans though. We've got some plans on, we, we know that it's only a matter of time. If we have 10,000, uh, members, right. Then we're going to have a crowded chat here. We've got some, we're talking to some software companies on some stuff we can integrate with, uh, YouTube to essentially without, you know, giving it all away, it would turn the chat system into almost like a Reddit where people would upvote questions and we would be answering based on that. So you know, you're going to ask your questions and then we're trying to find a way in which uh, for the members, let's say we could, we'll take like the top, I don't know how long the streams will be, but let's just say we got to figure it out. But let's say in a live stream, I can answer a hundred questions. Maybe we'll take the top 200 that are upvoted or whatever every week 
and that will answer 100 on air, and then the other 100 will send out an email to uh, all the members. It's like, here's the answers to the other 100 questions we might have, like Robert chime in, we could have Randy chime in. We can use other experts too, you know, like, oh, you have a really good shrimp question, let's get the shrimp king in on this one. So we're trying to work that club angle on multiple facets of like, okay, we've had speakers, but then also like, hey, Gary Lang, here's a pretty technical uh, rainbow fish question. Do you mind answering that? And so that way, it wouldn't be live, but it spices up the email, which I want to read the answers to those other 100 questions because they do bring in experts. Now, whether we can facilitate all that in a timely manner each week and whether we can get um, those personalities on board to do it, that remains to be seen. But we do realize that as it gets more and more popular, we will continually have that problem. So I never got a text notification for this. Bummer. Um, yeah. Hmm. Let's see here. Well, I, I had a snafu, so hopefully it'll it'll send out. Can we get an emoji of Spoon? Spoon's doing well. He's eating blood. He or she, I guess, is eating blood worms. We could probably. I've been thinking about. I was thinking about last night at midnight. By the way, I was like, man, we really got to do some more emojis, and I got to put it on the to do list, basically. And I got to think of some, but Spoon could be one. You did a video on oxalotls a long time ago and said they don't eat flakes, and I have to argue that, my friend. Well, sure. I mean, that's like saying babies don't eat rocks, right? Like, yes, they'll physically eat rocks, but they shouldn't. You know, flake food is, when you have an organism that's like this big, let's say your oxalot is this big, feeding them flake food, you're going to have to feed them an insane amount. And then also, if we're going to go down the rabbit hole of why flake food isn't good for an oxalotl, Flake food, when you put it into water, it's got a high surface area and vitamins and nutrients and stuff leach out much faster than in a pellet form. And being that oxalotls, everyone's seen that like meme video of like the food drops down and hits the ground and then like two seconds later the oxalotl bites for it. Oxalotls are very clumsy eaters. So by the time they're going to eat flake, not only like it's going to float forever and then finally come down, you've lost a lot of the nutrients. So um, also... In general, oxalotls eat, um, well, they smell it out, but then they eat by feel. And a flake on, let's say, a bare bottom aquarium is going to be much harder to eat than a mass war pellet. So uh, I have no doubt that they will eat some. I just don't think it's a very good uh, method to be feeding uh, oxalotls compared to what else is on the market. So uh, let's see. Yeah, candy. Candy doesn't send the text. I'm sure I didn't click the final button, probably. Um, yeah, let me let me see if I can send this text now. Let me see. Let me see what see how how on fire this app is. Like, oh no, it's crashing. Uh, let's see here if I can find it. There we go. What the heck is in the left corner that keeps going on and off? I was waiting until uh, someone would ask that. Yes. Um, so back. Here, if you watch, there'll be a light that comes on for one minute and then goes off for one minute. And it's been doing that for a very long time. I just moved it in here. Uh, that is actually the aquarium co-op light that we're testing, um, one of the iterations of it anyway, because I wanted to be able to prove like that I've been testing it for months and months and months and months and months. And I was like, if people don't see it on camera, they're going to assume I've been lying. Like We've already been working on this thing for a long time. Like Lights in general, we've been working on for two years, uh, but this light were we started last year so um but yes i've got it so we bought a special cycle timer that will have it be on for a minute and off for a minute forever and it never stops and uh that's the only way i thought how could i test longevity of a light when we put our warranty on it it's like okay well it's got so every day right every hour it's going to be on for 30 minutes and switched on and off for 30 minutes or 30 times right is that right yeah uh, so then you do that per day, right? Times 24, and you start getting to like, so if it goes on and off once a day, every day I'm doing a month's worth of on and off switches, surges in the system. Um, but it won't, it, it's only on for 12 hours a day of actual on time. And so I still can't go, well, the LEDs burn out at, you know, 10,000 hours instead of 50,000 hours. But this is the closest way I can get to stress test uh, the system while we're, like I'm waiting on kind of three foot and four foot versions of it with some other upgrades we asked for. Um, but the LEDs we've set on them now, we've set like what color temperature, we've set what LEDs we want. 
um, how we want the core and all of that. And so now we're just going to, for some uh, physical um, looks to it and, and, and that kind of stuff. I don't want to give too much away, but um, yeah. All right, let me look at these campaigns to this end. Uh, is it in a draft? Maybe it's sitting as a draft. Hmm, today, yep, I've got two of them sitting in draft. All, let's see here if I can look at this. Yep, I didn't hit the actual send send button. I'm going to try send now. <laughs> Disable smart sending. I sent it to those people. We're going to send it right now. And I'm going to hit review and send. Hopefully you guys will get that text. I mean, hopefully the other people that aren't here yet will get that text. That's what happens when everything gets sped up. I don't know what to do. The LED light for planet tanks? Of course. That's all we do is plant a community tanks here. So yes, uh, it is optimized for uh, plant tanks and community fish and all of that. And I think it's going to be amazing. But we're still working on aspects of it. And it's, you know, for one thing, uh, it was able to remain on and underwater for an hour. Water did get inside, so it's water resistant as opposed to waterproof. Um, but it's still like that light right there that we're that you're watching that light uh is the one that was underwater for an hour so we're i mean i'm really beating the crap out of these lights really stress testing them so a little bit of uh like i don't know gunk is on the lens from going underwater and like some fish crud getting in there but it still works fine and the par is still great um so yeah i'm beating them up as best i can not that you know, once you sell like 10,000 or something, you find ways of people like, oh, I never thought to abuse it like that. Okay, well, we'll see if we can change that in version 2.0. All right. Yes. <laughs> Zenzo says, consider being a member. Exciting perks are in the works. That's true. Exciting perks are in the works. Um, you know, I asked you guys, if you didn't see that, on the membership page in the forum to let me know what you guys would want to see uh, for some membership perks. And I want to make every, everyone assured that nothing is going away. So what you get now for $5, you're going to continue to get for $5. It's not like, oh, we're going to make this be a $10 level or anything like that. Uh, instead, what will happen is we'll add more perks to $5, but there'll be some other levels in which some more perks will happen. And usually for those perks, it's something that would cost money. Um, not like we put out videos, like that doesn't really cost more money. That's the $5 level. But, oh, we need to do an in-person event. Well, we have to pay for catering. We have to pay for the event space. We have to pay for flights. We have to pay for maybe security if it ever got that big, right? So it'll go towards that. It's more like buying tickets and or like another th thing we've been thinking about is how do you get into testing something like that, right? So maybe you pay 20 or 25 bucks a month and you're in like the get a free product beta testing or whatever. And if we don't, let's say we're not beta testing everything. We're like, hey, have a bottle of Easy Green this month um, or have a bottle of fried food. And you might say, hey, that was only $10 instead of 25. Like, well, yes, but maybe you'll be getting a light at some point that's a hundred plus dollars, right? So it's on a big scale. And there's always going to be people like, I joined this month. I got a light. This is amazing versus... You know, people are like, I've been here the whole time. I've only gotten, you know, $212 worth of value and I should have gotten $325. Like, well, you know, it's, we're at the mercy of what products we launch. Like we, you know, we would send out some test strips and that kind of stuff. I'm actually, that's on the to-do list to plan out kind of what we'd be sending out and what timeline, how much it would cost us. Because you got to factor in shipping, you know. So like a light, it's a $100 product plus $25 shipping and, and that kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll see. We'll adapt. Yeah, Candy moved into the state, and uh, her internet's been weird, and she just got here Wednesday. So now Sunday, everything, you know, I, she's still waiting on uh, stuff to arrive, and not, the computers aren't all set up yet, so she'll be, well, I assume she'll be here at some point. So I, I prefer she takes the day off. I'm always uh, advocating, like, take a day off. You don't have to be here. I can handle these guys and girls. Yeah, I would sign up to be a co-op beta tester. Well, that's how you could do it, through the, uh, the membership. Now, we don't have a way to do international yet. <clears throat> we are working on that, so don't worry about that. But, you know, it's going to take some time to get all... Like, it's not as easy. Like, you could just ship it. Like, yes, we could physically go to USPS <clears throat> and ship it. But 
we need all of our software and our back end to all talk to each other to go, hey, ship that to South Africa and let it happen in a timely manner as opposed to like, well, we took one, we shipped it to South Africa, but we forgot to take it out of inventory. This is a problem now. Accounting's going, why are you spending this money? What was it for? You know, all that kind of stuff. What's a good material to make aquarium lids for a 125 gallon tank? I'm looking for something that allows the benefit of lights and isn't too expensive. So my recommendation would be greenhouse paneling, uh, twin wall panels is what it's called. And when I use my PAR meter, which I actually have in the other room, uh, it let the most light through. So like traditional glass that has iron in it, it looks kind of green. That blocked like 20-ish percent of the light. And then like a clear glass, like a low iron glass blocked like 9%. And then I think the uh, twin walled uh, siding for a greenhouse, you can get like Home Depot, which I've done a video on that on how to cut them and everything. And I used them in my fish room. I think that blocked like two to 3%. And it makes sense, right? Like they're designed <clears throat> to let the sunlight through to a greenhouse. <clears throat> All right. Hopefully the audio is coming through louder and uh, just as clear today. Trying to make sure that I'm at the right levels for everyone. Egg crate diffusers can make nice cheap lids. They can, but they won't help you with evaporation at all. So you can still have tiny fish jump out too. But yes, they're very utilized in the saltwater world too. <laughs> if we chip in money, uh, would someone send Candy a move-in pizza so she doesn't have to cook? Leftover funds can be used for the staff pizza party. Yeah, I mean, we, or my, I, I won't take care of this. My wife, uh, part of her job at Aquarium Co-op is helping uh, employees relocate to us. And so she went shopping the day before and that day. And so we supplied like basic food things, make sure there's like towels, bought some uh, basic um, like pans and stuff and some silverware, all the stuff that you need, like, okay, I'm here, but everything's kind of trapped in boxes. Where is stuff? Because a moving company had to move it all. And so it's not like, you know, like, oh, I'm unpacking this. Yeah, put this in the kitchen. And uh, so, yeah, we, there is some basic stuff. And then <clears throat> we had her over last night because uh, we do our, our campfire thing in our backyard. And so she made steaks and they, I'm told they were delicious. I didn't have one. I had uh, a hot dog and some salmon. So, but rest assured, she will be taken care of uh, now that she's in. Well, she's always taken care of, but now she's in Washington, even closer to home base. Where's the glasses? I'm not smart enough for that today, I guess. I was, I barely made it here on time. Barely. Oh, these are too close. My, my eyelashes hit them. All right. Ah, they're, they're like ruining it for me today. What happened to the sword tails you got from Carl, Carl in Orlando? Uh, I actually, so I did one of my one hour challenges. I made a whole video about the one hour challenge. And so I filmed an entire one hour video that'll be coming out next, either next week or the week after one of those two. Um, but I actually was sorting some of those sword tails and showing the blue sword tails versus the ones that are coming out red and all of that. And I probably spent too much time doing that. And I actually leaked a product on accident cause I was using it the whole time. Um, but yeah, so it, you'll see probably more than you, you, like you'll probably nerd out. The rest of people are like, oh my gosh, this is way too much about sword tails and looking at, uh, you know, what's going on with them. Yeah, I haven't had enough coffee to put my glasses on. Kind of the same thing with me is I was not ready. Like I only ate half my breakfast and I was like, oh yeah, let me check. Oh my gosh, I'm supposed to be live. What am I doing? So, yeah. Um, yeah, all the all the cast off of those sword tails I got from um, Carl are going to the store at some point. Robert was here last night as well for the kind of campfire thing and showing him what fish are ready to go to the store. And uh, yeah, I've got him on the lookout for some things for me as well. I've adopted someone's lonely, lonely single panda. Ah. Panda Corydora into my tank with a bunch of salt and pepper corys, and the pa panda happily hangs out with the other corys and is thriving. Good. Usually you'll see they'll kind of adopt into the pack, but you will see other behaviors if you were to get more pandas, like all of a sudden, like, oh, look at that. They're hanging out with their own kind. 
I don't drink any coffee. Uh, I have a Diet Coke sometimes if I am not quite awake yet. Normally, I just go straight to the, the water, but. My 36 bow has hair algae on the gravel. Uh, need planted. I don't know what need Ned planted. It's plant, I'm guessing it's planted with water sprite and a dwarf lily. Eight hours of light. Nitrates over 50 at the end of the week. Should I lower light level and extend lower light level and extend the time? Uh, I don't know that that is necessarily what you need to do. So one thing to know is that 50 parts per million nitrates, make sure it's from a fertilizer. If it's from your fish poop, it could be missing like, oh, there's not a potassium or phosphate or something you're missing out of the water. You could have a lot of nitrates, but plants need everything. Algae can utilize just nitrates or just you know, boron or whatever. Um, as far as eight hours a day, that's probably fine. If you've got way too much light, that can be a problem. Um, so what you're really trying to do is match. If you've got eight hours of light, you need about eight hours of, you know, like fertilizer weight. And so if they can, let's say they could eat um, a squirt of, of uh, easy green every eight hours, right? Well, if you go to 12 hours, you're going to need, oh, I need like, 1.25 squirts, right? So you got to make sure you're matching those proportionally. And that's where a lot of people go wrong is they're just like, well, I don't get it. I have numbers A and B and they say they should be right. But it's like, well, yes, but you have to match. And uh, so what I would do is I would make sure that, you know, that uh, a fertilizer is going in and that nitrates aren't just too high from just like fish poop and just give it time, you know, and you might get a little bit of algae eaters to go on in there and they'll help you, but you'll win the war over time, but make slow, subtle changes um, without kind of knowing how high that light is, you're probably okay. Another hello from Denmark. More plants, more plants can help, but more plants. So part of the problem with planted tanks is everything is a solution. Oh, I upgraded my light. That fixed my problem. Oh, I added CO2. That fixed my problem. Oh, I switched fertilizers. That fixed my problem. Oh, I added more plants. That fixed my problem, right? Because it's kind of like A plus B plus C plus D equals win. The problem is you've got these four parameters, and for everyone's tank, it's like, oh, I'm missing B. Oh, I was missing D. Oh, I was missing C. And so you'll get these four different, basically, personality types online, and they'll all say, this is what fixed my problem. This is what fixed my problem. Oh, that didn't fix my problem. This one did. And because it's a true statement, they're very defensive of it. When the problem is, usually the person who is having a problem with the planet tank of these four elements, I had high nitrate, so it's like, okay, well, they're assuming fertilizer isn't right. They're thinking light could be, like, should I change the amount of light down and extend it, right? But what about CO2? You could technically be limited by CO2, right? And then there's, uh, you know, like, oh, you just have too much fertilizer, you need more plants or a different mix of plants to make sure that they're cohabitating well. So you kind of have to start just going through and going, okay, which one do you think is the most likely? I'll try that one. Let's modify that one. Wait for three or four weeks. Did it fix it? Is it getting better? No? All right, let's modify this one, right? And so that's what makes it really hard to get advice online is people just go, oh, well, in my experience, it was always, I had really crappy lights. That was holding me back. And so they'll tell people, like, you need a better light. It's like, well, no, their light's already good enough. Speaking of Carl, are you going to the ALA in the Miami area in October? I didn't even know that was going on, but I would say the odds are high because I could make a multi-visit uh, trip. I could visit Extreme. Uh, I could go collecting with wild fish tanks, Ryan, and I could do ALA in Miami, which I, the, my first convention I ever went to was the ALA, so American Library Association convention in Fort Lauderdale. And the collecting of fish was so fun. I really think that kind of got me into all this long term. Um, but the other thing you won't realize, if you, unless you go to these nerd conventions, is back then, we were out uh, collecting and the owner of like ZooMed was out there collecting. You get with some of these really high level people that are doing the same thing because they all love just like going to collect fish because it's fun. And so you get like a mixing of all these different levels of hobbyists into one. And uh, yeah, I'll probably, I mean, yeah. Well, ooh, I hope, I hope it's not like same day I'm supposed to be in the UK. This is what always happens to me is I say like, okay to something, and then I find out something, I'm like, dang it, I'd rather be there. 
And like, I'm going to go to the UK for Extreme to help promote Extreme and meet fans and do all that. But it's also like, oh, but I'd be going to, uh, <laughs> to Miami to also kind of do that. But can, I, can you convince my Canadian fish to enjoy their US Extreme food? Shouldn't be that tough. Maybe, maybe you're just like really spoiling them. I don't know. My beard game is strong today. Yeah, I didn't shave. I took a shower this morning. I didn't shave. I usually knock it down some and clean up, clean up down here, but I didn't. There is a collecting trip at this ALA. See, there's that's one more reason to go. If you, uh, I don't know all the details of this ALA convention yet, but. It's well worth it to go collecting. I know some people had some concerns uh, about us, uh, Randy and, and Ryan collecting. Ryan, as far as I remember, because we were getting into it, I sent him all those nets and I was collecting with him a couple years ago. Uh, he's got the permits because he, he runs a business and he's got the permits to collect and he knows where to collect. And, and we were in a, in a, in a, what, like a, a drainage ditch on the highway and uh, we had the permits and everything, and, and when the police came, or the state troopers, right? And uh, they were just like, what are you doing? And we're like, oh, we're just we're looking and collecting fish. And they're like, oh, well, technically, the freeway is an interstate and is not the same as going, um, you know, that's why there's like the state troopers. And so we actually weren't allowed to collect there. So we're like, oh, no problem, you know. So we, you know, we're never looking to do the wrong thing. But even though we had permits on, it's like, oh, well, you just can't do it on, like, even though no one really cares and, like, motor oil's getting in there and all that. It's like, well, technically, uh, you can't do that here because it's, I don't know, what is it, international property? Oh, no, my, my tiles are coming down. I put some, uh, some acoustic tiles to help uh, the sound. Oh, man, this is terrible. Look at this. Can you guys see this? Look at that. One, two, three, four, five have fallen down. How dare you use VM tape? And then I've got two up here that are on the verge of coming down. I might have to use little little nails. I didn't want to put holes in things. Oh, now it's getting worse. All right, I'll have to do for now. I hate it when you try to make something better and it just doesn't go so well. Extreme needs to make their beta pellets smaller. That would be impossible. And what I, what I mean by that is maybe you have an old batch, but they are, they're very tiny at this point. Like the only smaller pellet you could really go to is like the nano pellet. So if you haven't tried them in a while, uh, get some of those beta pellets. I think they're a, a 1.0 millimeter. They used to be a 1.5 millimeter. They're pretty small now. In fact, I'll grab them. I'll be right back. I, I've got them. Oh, I forget every time that my mic is uh, clipped in. Hold on. We'll go. We're going to try this system. In theory, if I untangle myself, I'm all tangled up in wires. This is the best uh, YouTube experience, by the way. But now I can go. In theory, you guys can come with me when I go into the other room. And uh, all the transmitters should be working. So hopefully it doesn't cut out. But let me grab... I gotta go to all my stockades of, of fish food. Right here. Because every time there's a new fish food or a new label or anything like that, well, I'll talk about these, but yeah, right here. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, the fish room stays warm. That's what that sound is, in case you hear that. I have no idea if you guys could hear that while I was gone. Let's see. Is it still working? Is there any sound? Hello? Hello? Yeah, it's working. Okay, good. I wasn't sure because I unplugged myself. This is how we can have conversations. Oh, that's the wrong cord. That'll work. How we can have conversations all around the fish room with Dean and I and whoever else without losing audio. So trying to up our game. All right. So the new beta pellets, which I realize KG Tropical is taking credit for this. That's fine. But we have been in talks with... Uh, with Extreme for a very long time on making sure the beta pellets floated longer and that they were a little smaller. So, and we're responsible for the spoon. I demanded the spoon. Oh, I'm just making a mess. Why do I do this on my keyboard every time? I, I gotta be the only 
person on the planet that routinely gets uh, fish food in their keyboard. I don't know if I'll be able to show this, but these pellets are much smaller now. Let's see if I can focus on these. See how small they are? They're as small as a pellet you can make and still make them mostly float because you have to get some air in there. So you get this little spoon. This is a great little feeding spoon. Let me get this food off. I got to get my Roomba to run now. <clears throat> but yeah, crunchy keys. That's right. You get the crunchy. <laughs> Don't over overfeed the keyboard. But yes, uh, the one millimeter. See if I can get to focus on. Hide my face somehow. Oh, yeah, one millimeter is what they are now, uh, floating pellet. So that should, should help you with the smaller, the smaller pellet. And then also, uh, Extremes want me to say this, this nice pellet is the same as our floating, like, cichlid pellets. But they just, I always ask for the other label because I'm like, I don't want to have to explain nice. I can't even remember. So nice stands for naturally intense color enhancer. Because that's krill and all of that, but uh, yeah, we'll probably start carrying the. Because I was like, I don't really care about the label that much. Like, sure, we'll we'll carry the nice one. Uh, so if you see a change, don't worry about it. Still the same great food. So, but they sent me one just so I had the, uh, so I could see it. Hmm. Welcome to the club, all the new members. Uh oh, I regret my comment causing. Probably so much trouble. Must have been the... I, don't know, I think you were talking about the betta food. I need to use 1 pound 3M double-sided for quick-release hooks. I know. These were so cheap, though. Because you get, like... You get a hundred little tabs. You get, like... Do I have any more right here? Well, they're, like, that big. You get a hundred of these things. It was, like, nine bucks on Amazon. So I thought, well, this will work great. Because it's... So I bought some different ones. I didn't realize I bought different ones to hold up my map. That's also, oh, right there, sound panels. So they're all sound panels in the shape of a map. And it's been working awesome over there. I don't know why it's been so not great over here. In fact, there's another one coming down right over here. Help. Is the map yeah, on the far wall showing anything in particular? Uh, nothing in particular yet. I kind of want to put little pins in it, like on all the countries I visited. I just haven't gotten that far yet. Right now, it uh, just works as a backdrop when we're playing ping pong. Yeah. Yes, you... Wait, yes, and you got the 3M you paid for? That's a very good point. So, I, I do know that you get what you pay for, and so when I tried on those panels, I was like, great, $8, great solution. I'm going to do that again. Except I bought a slightly different version, and it's not as... well. I'm assuming it's not as good. So, you know, it's, it's one of those, uh, you live and learn, I guess. I'll order the same ones again, or I'll try and stick them harder. To be fair, I only used four stickums, and on those I used five. So one in each quarter and one in the center. <laughs> When's the ping pong video with Bob running the table? We were talking about how to set up the camera angles for a live stream for some member-only nerdy ping pong to be fair i did beat bob a couple of times yesterday he won the majority of the game so i'm not trying to say he didn't but i i'm getting better getting better hmm. yeah members only ping pong stream we probably will it, it's pretty fun there's a lot of uh we're working on our not swearing like it's it's real competitive real competitive so we're getting pretty good at it, though to hang your 3M, scrub the surface with alcohol pad. That should help. Yeah, it should. I, I thought it, I, I kind of knew. I was like, ah, if there's a problem, I'll fix it after that. And now, like, I came in today because I was supposed to start an hour from now. I wouldn't like, oh, let me fix this. Instead, it was like, I didn't realize till right now. Bob's got to take it easy and let some people win. It's true. No one will play if they never get to win, right? I remember on one live stream, there was a fancy graphic that displayed the question being answered. Is that ever coming back? Uh, there is some software that allows you to do that. The problem I found was it wasn't super easy for me to do. Um, 
we're working. We're, there's some other software we might play with that can kind of do something like that. But for right now, it only really does well when there's someone else that can line up the questions for me. Because otherwise, I spend too much time going. Hold on, click. Okay, is that going to do it right? Like, oh no, it's screwed up. Okay, hold on. You know, have the test strips made it through customs yet? No. California is just like at a standstill. They're still, they have not moved one inch in a week. They haven't moved an inch. They're still sitting at customs in California, which is real sad. Like at this point, our container from China might beat the air. We, we've got some from China shipped by air and they've been sitting for weeks, literally two weeks at this point, sitting LA customs, just not doing anything. So it's going to be real sad if uh, like another two weeks go by and we don't have them and then the container full of them shows up. Like, oh, geez. But, you know, it's one of those things. We're going into summer. Sales are going down. That's always a nerve-wracking thing when you're watching sales just boop. And, uh, but it also means that employees and stuff like that can get out of work early, enjoy the sun more. Um you know, we don't send people home, like we don't force them to go home, but we allow it like, hey, you want to go home early? Like we don't need that many people, we don't have that many orders in the warehouse, or it's not that many people coming to the retail store. And so people can get a little extra sun time in. <laughs> yeah. We're 1,000 people watching and less than half the likes? Well, yeah, if you're, I, I do, I, I got called out on this the other day of like, you're right. I forget to hit the like button a lot of times when I'm watching a creator that I am enjoying. Um, if you're not enjoying it, don't worry. You don't have to hit the like button. But if you are enjoying it, it does. The more likes we get, the more. Basically, here's the way to think of this. During a live stream, every time you hit a like, it sends out the notification to one more person that is already um, wanting notifications, right? So if we have 1,000 people here and 5,000 people want to... Uh, view a live stream, if all 1,000 people click the like button, 1,000 more people get notifications. If they come in and they like it, it sends it out to the next 1,000. But if it stops, so if like, oh yeah, I came in, I didn't click the like button, it won't tell the next person after me that it's here. YouTube is very uh, feedback driven with live streams of like, if people aren't engaging, why would we send more people here? And so, yes, yeah, so like spike, all that stuff does help. And the more often you remember to hit a like, if you do like it, the better it'll be for everybody. And so don't even think about like you're helping me. Think about how you're helping all the other people like, dang it, I missed it again. Like I never get the notifications. It's basically become a crowdsourced system where if we don't hit the like button to help each other, it's just not going to do that. So, yep. I mean, I got the text notification. If you want that, you sign up in the comment or in the description down below. You can sign up on our page. Only costs us like a couple of cents to send you a text. And uh, we'll let you know when it's going, but you can, the people that don't know how to do that or anything like that, uh, go ahead and uh, hit that like button. How are the Koi getting along? They're doing all right. Uh, Robert and Caleb and Jimmy were looking at them last night with flashlights. Uh, they were actually looking at bullfrogs and little tree frogs, but then they saw the Koi. So doing all right. I still, we just brought over, I brought over a big tub of, of Koi food and I need to order, um, I want to order a koi feeder, and at, once we get the house on the market, hopefully I can bring that guy that's been doing a little bit of work for us over um, over here and get power to that pond, because I want to put in some aeration and, um, yeah, improve the pond a little bit. Like, there still needs to be more work on the pond. I still need to work on the outflow and that kind of stuff, and right now it's let's get the house on the market so that we're not managing two places and worrying about like, what's anyone going to break into the old place and all of that. So all the available time we've been uh, going, we've got like one little van load left of just like little bits of stuff, like empty bins and boxes, packing boxes that we got to bring over. Um, and then we've got like a, there's a room to be painted and uh, pressure washing the outside, um, like, like the ground. And there's like one more mow to be done. I got to pick up the, the, the lawnmower, the blower, and the weed eater. Uh, so that's that's on my to-do list still, like before they come and take pictures, um, which I think all that's happening this week. So, um, But then, then it's full-on focus time in how do I just better aquarium co-op and my own home life here. And so I'm looking forward to it, not having to kind of be at two locations. Any upcoming streams with Corey and Girl Talks Fish? Um... 
We definitely could start doing that. Um, I wanted to make sure... I like in-person stuff a lot, but now that COVID's kind of uh, tapering down, hopefully we've been wanting to start up these events for influencers and stuff like that. And, and when the community manager starts, if we do an event like in Washington where it's like, hey, we're going to have speakers and dinner and you can shop or something. Um, it'd be cool to bring Irene in, like, hey, you give a talk, Randy give a talk, Robert give a talk, I'll give a talk, Dean give a talk, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's, it's much more likely. I am considering, I think I'm just going to bring everything back under one umbrella. And the poll that we put up yesterday of, do you watch everything? Do you, are you selective in what you watch? And being that like 72% or something like that were selective in what they watch, it makes more sense to put, um, like the videos we've been putting on the More Aquarium Co-op channel, to put them on the main channel and just let you guys choose between them. Because I, I share them most times anyway, but there's so many videos over there that will like do really well. And it's like, man, we should have had that on the, the main channel, but we don't want to like overload. And, you know, there'll still be some videos that go over there like that maybe you're just not suitable for the main channel. But in general, I'm kind of this like, hey, if we're going to spend the time to make something, let's just put it out there and people can judge whether they like it or not. Like, uh, I'm moving towards a smaller minority. I'd much rather have, you know, 20,000 really dedicated fans than like I've got a million subscribers that kind of only half care sometimes. And so we're moving towards the, let's get this group of people that really like to hang out together. Hmm. Can I safely, wait, I need to safely disinfect a bare bottom glass tank, the aquarium co-op sponge filter, and tank decor from a velvet outbreak. What's the best way to do so? I probably would, uh... I probably would just let it sit empty for like two months. But the best way would be probably putting some bleach in there and letting that just kind of marinate for a day or two and then water change that out, then fill it back up with water with like extra, extra, extra dechlorinator because dechlorinator will break down the bleach, water change that again, then you're probably good to go. If you really want it to be safe. But I, I just let things die out typically. It's easier. And I have so many tanks, like, ah, I just ignore that one for a couple months. Then, all right, we'll come back to it. Uh, let's see. You should do the round table talk again on more aquarium co on wait on more aquarium co-op channel. I really like those talks. Yeah, uh, everyone's so busy these days. That's what really it's come down to. Because with everyone stuck at home with COVID, now everyone's super busy. Like Dean's still out of town. He comes back like next week, I think. And uh, we're gonna work on the two hundred thirty gallon. But yeah, I mean, there is a reason why we have like this big U-shaped table. Like it's, it's not out of the realm of possibility. And that's one of the reasons why I started getting mics that can go all throughout the room. We want to do, you know, like if it's a two-person stream, you can have them both on the couch, set up a, a camera going uh, towards them. If we're going to do here, we can set up a couple of cameras or maybe one, well, let me show you guys, like one more towards the TV, right? So we can do presentations but then we could have people sitting all around try to catch it that way but yeah the goal is to you know use this studio or fish room or whatever you want to call it to the fullest and uh you know well, we're gonna get there we're still like what's crazy is things are getting dialed in i think sound's getting pretty good and that kind of stuff and uh you know this might only be like the third or fourth stream here so it's it takes there's a lot i still need to work on lighting Oh man, another panel just fell. This is embarrassing. Uh, I got the, the big old green screen and you wouldn't know it, but there's a bunch of little other thingies above me. Um, but slowly but surely, as I can save up for it, the, you know, some of this panel work is stupid expensive. It's not fun. Uh, my Valis, oh, Valisneria. Yep. How do I spell that? Won't stay in the substrate. Uh, who has done. Who has done what to keep their valves down? I don't have any with me, but tweezers. You get the roots, and the tweezers with the bend in them, you put that in, so you, you kind of come in, if these are the tweezers, right? But imagine the ends go like this, the curve. So what you do is you hold the tweezers like this so that the curve goes in, and then you write the tweezers. So now the, the roots are holding the tweezers, right? So here's your, here's your tweezers, and you go, bloop, open them up, lift it back up and now you've got roots that are at an angle the rocks or whatever you're using hold them down a lot better you also have to make sure you have deep enough substrate if you have very little 
then it's going to be really hard to hold it down. I recommend a deeper substrate. Why is Taco Tuesday a thing? We should make that a thing for members, like on the... I don't know. I think it's just... Uh, I think it's because everyone loves tacos, and $1, like, Tuesday tacos are amazing. I haven't done a t Taco Tuesday in probably, like, four years. I don't know. It was, even before COVID, I got so busy. I hadn't done it in years. So, hmm. Maybe we could do that again. Like, we should try to do... Well, everyone's on a different time zone, but maybe we could do, like, a some kind of eat tacos. You guys would watch me eat tacos, right? <laughs> All right. Oh, candy has arrived. There you go. I have a 10-gallon tank with shrimps. Can I put my clown killifish fry directly in it or a small container? Uh, it's better to monitor the food. Well, if you got all the shrimp, I think you could feed just a bunch of like floating foods on the top, and the shrimp will get what they don't eat. So you could do it in a little container. That would probably you'd probably get like another 15% quicker growth out of that, but. You could also screw up and be like, oh, no, I didn't change the water enough, and they died. So I would just, just let it let it be. So make sure you got the flow down a bit. You don't want a sponge filter that's like, because they're sitting at the top. You want it to be kind of uh, not too turbulent for them. Are we? Yeah, I didn't check with the subscriber level lately. Let me see. Or the membership level. Not bad. I'll grab one of the questions. Hmm. Up to 2,483. What's weird is, like, right after the live stream last week, we were up to 2,490, but then people drop off and then don't, don't uh, resub up. So we're seven away from where we were last week. We'll get there. I want 2,500. So I, I get interviewed on Tuesday um, by, what is it? It's a, not Newsweek, that was another thing. Uh, Insider Magazine for like a bigger YouTube piece. So it'd be, it'd be cool to be able to say I have 2,500 instead of like, well, I have 2,483. I'd have to say 2,400. Dean's cooking channel? Yeah, I don't know when Dean's going to do a cooking channel. Uh, the guy is just busier. He's just super busy. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I hope so. I, I'll, I want to be, if Dean does a cooking show, I want to be the guy on the other side of the, the, the counter that just has to sit there and eat and go, mmm, yes, good. That's I, I want to be that character on the show, though. Oh, yes, great. Yes. Oh, is that, is that how you do that? Oh, I just want to, I want that job. What am I setting up for summer? Uh, mostly tons of brine shrimp. Get the brine shrimp on lockdown, and I'm trying to camp uh greg sage some trout goodies i have no idea when they're going to come out so don't buy them all or if you see them let me know um and i want to get a lot more libraries in there i've got some corridors last night and uh, mostly the one of the biggest goals is to get most of those totes filled and uh yeah the judge commenter commentator yeah that's a, i want to be the judge commentator but yeah i've been with the one hour challenge i've been sorting through a lot more fish and shrimp i did that too and so I'm going to get my lines going better and better. So it's, it's been good to spend the hour. Are there large species of detritus worms? I spotted what looked like a pale earthworm in the substrate at the front glass of my tank. It was over two inches in length. Yeah, you can get some worms that are pretty chunky going on in, uh, in aquariums. I don't know. I, I believe they're all types of annelids, I think. Uh, I don't know that much about them all other than they're mostly all beneficial and they can come in with like potted plants and things like that. Um, uh, from, from farms and, and I've seen like, like worms, like, like what I consider to be blood worms develop naturally in ponds outside and, and inside. I, I noticed it inside of my ponds too. So um, but I, I consider them all to be beneficial. They're a food source and they're constantly breaking down waste, which is good. Do I sort shrimp by size or color? Uh, mostly color, but you know, don't only select the best color because you need males and females and males typically have worse color. Um, but I'm going to start doing more like one of the tanks. Somehow there's orange and red shrimp. You guys will see it in, in the video that I did. Um, but I'm, I worked on sorting the orange from the red, but that's going to take work because they've been muddied a little bit. So to get them to breed truer, um, 
But eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect like the best 30 red cherry shrimp I have, put them in a tank, get them going, um, and then like put the, all the other ones at the store or feed them to like turtles and stuff, which some did get fed to the turtles that were just really bad coloration. And it's a great, uh, it's a great snack for the turtles, lots of good calcium, so. Mmm. I don't feed any live worms, so I assume it came with a plant. I was just blown away by the size. Yeah. And, you know, all that, like, microfauna and all those little things, I think are, are great for an ecosystem and really help out and make your tank kind of a more seasoned thing, which I finally did a whole video on seasoned tanks. So hopefully you guys will watch that and, uh, uh, you know, give it a like and share it, because it, it's going to be one of those, like, I even admit in the video, like, this is something I've made up, but I do think it's very important for people to understand in their aquarium. Even on the forum right now, I think there's a person that's like, I don't get it. My tank was cycled, put in all the fish, now disaster. It's like, yes, but how long and all that. And so if we can start getting the conversation to change for people to how long is an aquarium been set up, how established is an aquarium as opposed to, you know, well, I put in ammonia, it processed it, and then everything died like normal. Ugh. Ugh. Your easy planners, are there any plants you would not recommend using them with? Uh, I probably wouldn't use them with, uh, like, uh, dwarf hair grass, because I don't know that it's going to really be able to jump out very well. Um, probably some others. Like, all the crypts are going to do well, valves are going to do well. A lot of the stem plants will do well, but you'll eventually cut them and move them anyway. Um... Hmm, what else? What else is... I mean, most work. That's. I mean, there, one of the reasons is... Okay, Java Moss, maybe not. Like, you could, though. We almost sell only potted plants, and so they're made for potted plants, so most of them are going to work really well. But there would be some that we don't sell that probably wouldn't work well. I'm trying to think of them. Like, I probably wouldn't do, like, Blixa. You could. Uh, in Aerios, I probably just wouldn't, though. I, you could, but I probably wouldn't. Do I plan to raise brine shrimp to adults? Uh, I gave my pond away to Bob that had all my adult brine shrimp in it, and I don't know if he got it going, but um, I'll probably do some of that. Like on Basically, on the other side of this wall is a place where I can do a bunch of ponds, but right now I'm trying to make sure that I get everything inside going really well before I start diverting my attention to even more stuff. Like There's, there's a lot to take care of. That's part of it. It's like before I had like 20 tanks and some ponds. Now there's like 70 ponds plus tanks over there. And so adding even more on, it starts getting to like, okay, how much time can I reliably take care of well? I have a molly that looks like she's going to pop, but doesn't drop her fry. Then I isolate her and she zooms around and seems stressed. Uh, she's looked pregnant for about 28 days. Well, she could be eating her own fry. Could be getting eaten by other fish, could get sucked up by a filter, could be dropsy too. It could be like, oh, she's actually not pregnant. But in general, established tanks with lots of plants are great spots for fry to hide and is the least less stressful for fish. So I would I would go that route. I don't I personally don't like to use too many uh like fry box and stuff for live bears unless they're really big. Uh the bigger you can get the better. Like at least I like to use those floating um <laughs> uh, those paint containers. If we get 50 members today, uh, Zenzo will swim in Bob's brine shrimp pond. That sounds disgusting. I hate salt water on my skin. I The pond, the place part is the pond's only 100 gallons. I just want to see Zenzo displace like 80 of the gallons. <laughs> oh my gosh. 50 members. Let's see, what number are we at right now? We'd have to get, we'd have to get like, we're at 2,483. We'd have to get like 47 more. So you guys got a high, high dose or a high level. Best fry box is a 10 gallon. That does work really well, Cody. But what I find a lot of times happens is you take it from like this great planet tank with all these fish and a lot of times the 10 gallons are kind of sparse and that's where you can get them like freaking out. Like, why is this? I feel unsafe. And so you got to make sure that that 10 gallon is like 
equally stocked with plants or fake decor or whatever it's going to be so they feel safe. Uh, but yes, a 10-gallon would be a great solution. And that's, that's the, honestly what I do a lot of times, except it's more like a 40-gallon or a new pond. And then I try to do, uh, try to do what I can. Oh, the floating uh, paint strainers from a bucket. That's what I use. Sorry. Um, we made them in that video. Well, we used a, um, we used a uh, pond planter box, but we also do paint strainers. Was Dean able to transport the gold ocelot successfully? I don't know. I don't think. I think they're still. Uh, I think they're still with him. I'm not sure. Wait, maybe he came back today. I don't know. I haven't. Ta I talked to Dean last night, but we were planning what we were going to do this week uh, <clears throat> on the 230 gallon and everything. But I didn't ask like what day he actually landed. Mostly we just schedule like, hey, what day are you free? Hey, I'm free that day too. Let's do that. And not so much like, what time will you be home, buddy? Can I keep red eye tetras with fire mouse cichlids or maybe Oscars? Probably with fire mouse. With Oscars, yeah, I bet you could too. I mean, maybe at the top end of the Oscars, if they didn't get fed enough, they'd be chasing them down, but I bet you could work. Have I ever heard of people using monographs in the aquarium setting? Uh, yes. I mean, it doesn't work, but yes. Monograss is a terrarium plant, so unless most of it's out of the water, it just dies back, unfortunately. It, it'll hold up for like six months. And then it dies. Uh, I also watched your video with LRB Aquatics. We're in the same fish club. Wish I knew you were in Indiana back then. Yeah, I haven't been to Indiana in a couple, well, I guess say a couple years, but way longer than a couple years. Yeah, I went there, I think I've been there twice. Yeah, one time. Nearly died because the roads are so crazy at night. There's so much construction, it was scary. Hmm. A bare bottom full of hornwort. Hornwort works well, but it can also die back really easy. You got to make sure tons of fertilizers going in there. But yeah, hornwort is a great liber, or not even just liber, but a great fry plant. Uh, you just got to make sure it doesn't die back. I've had so many when I'm not watching, like, dang it, didn't get enough food and it died. Got a pink flamingo crypt from y'all. It's growing great. Good. Two new leaves, You're currently using Easy Green and Seacamp Potassium. If I added an iron supplement, would it get even pinker? Uh, possibly. It depends on how much iron you've already got going on and how much light it's getting. But yes, play with that a little bit. I actually think you could probably give it a little bit of a boost by using some root tabs. That's what I would do. But um, yeah, you kind of got to play with, again, play with those parameters to see what's going to give you that uh, look you're looking for. I ordered some Santa Claus guppies from Aquabid. Should I complete the Medtrio as an active infection or preventative measure? Uh, I always recommend start with preventative. Um, unless you see something, like if you're like, oh, they have ick, switch and just only treat for ick. Um, you know, there's so many ways to do the meds. We do it where we do the trio on everything that comes in. But if you have tons of time and you're going to spend tons of time with those fish, you could start with like, okay, I'm just going to do an antibiotic, right? And then you could do, um, if they get through that fine, it's been a couple weeks, then you could do paracleanse and deworm them. Now, paracleanse gets a few external parasites too, but I find ICX works really good on any fungus stuff or uh, some of the external parasites as well. So, you know, it's one of those like, sometimes you can get away with less than all three. Sometimes you know, you got to use them all. Sometimes you got to really battle the fish because it's really sick, you know. And uh, like at the store, we don't have really time. And here, when you have 70 tanks and you're like, oh, maybe you get four different kinds of fish in the week, it starts getting hard to remember, like, what, what are we doing here? What are we doing there? Where are we at? So it's better, it's easier for me to do the trio at that point. I use hornwort in most of my breeder tanks, bare bottom with no fertilizer. I think they're just hard. I think they just need hard water because mine never die back. Yeah, I don't know. I've I've seen lots of die back, and uh, I've seen lots of people struggle with it too. So, I'm not sure. I know that like hornwort, I can get to grow a foot a day. It grows stupid fast. Um, but yeah, if you got that working for you, by all means, I'm not the master of hornwort apparently. So. I, I shy away from it. Have you seen the Japan Blue Double Red Swordtail Guppies? 
Uh, even the fry and the females are beautiful rose gold. I don't think I have. Japan double red swordtail guppies. Japan. Let me see if I can find those. Let's see. Oh, maybe these? Maybe these? Let's see here. Let's see if I can show you guys. Oh, it's the wrong thing. Why is it being broken now? Oh, sad times. Can I fix it? Let's see if I can fix it. Hold on. Oh, I know why. Because I had to. I know. I know. I was having a microphone problem earlier. Must be uh, these ones here, I would guess. That's my guess. I'm not sure. But no, I've got like a yellow and blue version where like the, the body's yellow and the tail is blue. I've got that in my, uh, my fish room right now. More like, uh, more like this right here. Hey, here's wild fish tanks. That's Ryan. Yeah, I've got basically these guys in the fish room right now. They actually look more like this. But uh, no, I haven't seen... I haven't really seen these. These, I don't know. On one hand, I like them, but for me, yeah, they're calling these double red sword too. But for me, if they don't sell really well, then it kind of becomes a moot point of like, well, I've got a ton. And I don't like, if I don't love them, then I'm wasting my time, which I'm not in love with these. Like, they're cool, but I'm not in love with them, so I'm not sure how well they'll sell. But yeah, you see, double blue, red. Double sword tail, or wait, Japan blue, double red sword tail, Japan blue, double red sword tail, those look the same, but then Japan blue with red, double sword tail, and over here you got Japan blue, double sword tail, like there's so many, Japan blue, red, double sword tail, like these are looking different to me, Japan blue, double sword tail guppies, I guess they're missing the red from that, but it gets really convoluted with these common names, so that's why I always have to look it up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that like button and uh, become a member if you want to see all the crazy stuff that's about to unleash. Maybe we'll do a, maybe we'll find a way to like, maybe we'll set a, a join point. Like you can, you got to join now and then everyone that joins before will get this benefit or something once we release it. I don't know. Hey, there we go. Guy Moore's became a member. Summer tub and a 55 gallon poly drum in Florida, heat feasible. Planning a large sponge filter for circulation, mostly shade areas. Uh, yeah, you definitely could. Look at Charles Clap Saddle setup. Those greenhouses get really hot in Texas in the summer. Uh, I've done some uh, blue barrel setups before. After seeing Charles and his farm, uh, not, not when I went there, but uh, when I saw, when I went to ALA, he did a presentation and I was like, wow, you could do that. Like you can get those barrels for like 20 bucks. Um, what I really struggled and ran into when you feed that food goes for like four feet down. You can't know if you're overfeeding. Uh, so you really got to have robust filtration and you can't know if fish die. They're at the bottom. I was doing sponge filters. I didn't get the system. I felt like to really thrive i made some fish but it didn't thrive like charles is he's got a recirculating system i would just start playing with it and uh yeah i didn't i didn't quite i mean i i kind of want to play with it again like you're actually getting me like oh, i want to set some drums um but it was really hard to see the fish but i do believe it's the cheapest way to set up big uh bodies of water How's the tier membership ideas coming along? We got a, a list a mile long, lots of good ideas. And then, you know, like, like one of them, <clears throat> we need, we need integration with, with YouTube. We need to be able to like, like let's say we're going to give a benefit outside of YouTube. We have to be able to certify that you're a YouTube member. Otherwise we're just going to lose tons of money. Right. And so we, we've started the process with YouTube API to do all that. I signed my life away. I've, done a lot of work on that and now developers are kind of working on it to see like okay let's start trying to implement this api see where we can get to and we're just not through the other side of it yet so hopefully it'll work in the ways that we're wanting to we're still trying to figure out can it discern which level of membership you are can it tell us how long you've been a member or can't it i don't know yet um we also have to figure out like what at what point is it going to authenticate is it once a month is it every time you'd purchase from us? Is it every time you initiate it? Is it, you know, so there's a lot of, got a lot of ideas and a lot of project mapping done with the developers, but 
Uh, some of it comes down to exactly how the API will return information to um, decide what we can actually pull off. Welcome, Kevin Mousir. Mouser? I like Mousir better. I just got some mob guppy. Wait, I got some mob guppies, California red guppies. Uh, they're pretty and really healthy. Good to hear. Uh, I really want to get some Savoir Tang. I've never tried growing it before. Yeah, it's a fun plant. Pretty slow grower. I found it grow grew faster when I didn't have light on it. Um, but yeah, it's it's a pretty cool plant. It's expensive because it grows so slow, unfortunately. Do I still have the Berlin Buttercups? I do. Uh, I'm down to one pair. And what I mean by that is when I moved, I was up to like like 15 males and one female. And that was just going to stress that female out. So... 14 of the males went into the assorted guppy bin that'll go to the store. And now I've got a, I'm down to a pair again uh, in a 40 breeder. And hopefully they'll have some babies. And we'll start raising them up. And this time I'll dedicate more time. And hopefully if it's getting male heavy, they won't uh, harass the females and wear them out. I mean, that's assume what's going on. Maybe they only ever had males. I'm not sure what went on because it, it was hard to um, keep track at that point. Hmm. Or a NERM code? Could the members have an ID number? Yeah, possibly. I'm not sure exactly how it works. Um, yeah, the problem with discount codes is once they get out online, everyone can use them. So we still, like, I have thought about being able to do, like, hey, let's do a, a, a discount on this new product for members or something. Uh, but we still have to have a way to authenticate that you're actually a member, because otherwise, whenever we were doing codes, and this is years ago, Within a couple of days, they'd hit the internet, and then everyone would use them. So, and we even had it where like some of the employee-only codes were getting out. So we had to like just put the kibosh on like all types of codes. And it was, it, you know, you don't you don't think about it until like, oh yeah, this person's supposed to get, you know, like okay, yeah, give this, you know, this person's buying for a school, give them fifty percent off everything. And then they had um, honey installed, honey tracks that. And then all of a sudden, you'd have 400 orders come through at 50% off, and we'd lose a ton of money. And would be like, oh my gosh, this cannot happen again. Like, we just lost $4,000. So we stopped doing all kinds of discounts, and we just made our prices as low as we can get them. And then, like, the, and the, where it would be applicable, by the way, is I am willing to sell uh, member merchandise, like a, an aquarium co-op shirt or hat or something, to a member. If you're paying a monthly fee, like, okay, maybe it's 20% off or something. Um, because we're not selling that product to make a profit. You're already like by wearing it, you're uh, helping support us. And I'm willing to kind of take a little bit of a loss um, on the sales of that product because you're paying the money up front of being a member. So well, we're going to see if we can make some of that stuff work. But it, there's, all, there's so many little things got to play together. And like, oh, that thing broke. And then like a massive wrench goes into it. You always mention the Berlins uh, nostalgically. Yeah, I hope they do get... I had them in a nine-gallon, like, uh, J-Bo tank next to our TV, and I just... I really love that tank, and I love those fish, and I want them... I want to really... Uh, uh, I'm on a big colony of them again. Why not plug discount codes during a live stream? Well, one, I get even more hate that people, like... There's, like, if you watch some other videos and stuff out there, people are making fun of you guys as members because you're paying me to advertise to you. Uh, we just get even more heat of that, of, like, oh, you, you only do live streams to sell stuff. Like, no, no, we have to sell stuff, but we do it to help people. And then the discount code, the problem is if we don't let them go for a while, if you're not live during it, we just get lots of emails from people going, hey, that's not fair, I was busy, I was doing this, can I still get the discount? And then Candy's life becomes horrible of like, oh, we had 200 emails today of everyone wanting a discount and, uh, you know, it's not going to work. Yeah, and huh, discounts train people to wait for discounts. It's 100% true. People were doing that of like, when's, they would, we would get emails every day. When's your next discount? I'm not ordering until that happens. And it's like, okay. So we just stopped doing all of that. So, you know, we could have Candy spend her time answering 500 emails in a, well, not 500, but 200 emails in a day. And they could be, What's your current discount? Or we can have answer 200 emails of like, hey, you have a problem with shipping. Hey, you're having a sick fish or something else going on. Like actually help people instead of just help discount people. So we made the price go down as much as we could, cut all of that out and focus on the helping people. 
How are my Vienna guppies doing? Uh, doing pretty good. Uh, we removed a lot of extra males out of there. Same thing. They got kind of male heavy. Um, so, but there's still probably like 30 or 40 between a lot of females and probably like four or five males in there right now. I picked the best looking males that I thought when I moved them. Basically, when you move, it was a, a good time to go through all of the fish and really take a good look at them and sort and pick and choose what you want to breed forward. Yeah, I just want the strips. The price is low enough. I right, tell me about it. We're sitting in a sitting in LA. We paid, and that's the thing. It's like we paid a lot of money to fly those here, and the whole reason, like, was so that we wouldn't be out until the cargo container arrived. And then if it's gonna take this long to get through customs, that basically, you know, if it takes a month, so it takes five weeks basically to get something from. China or Vietnam or whatever country we order from to us on a boat. If it's going to take three or four weeks on an airplane, there's no point to use that anymore. But that's the first time we ever had this kind of delay. Not good. Oof. Oof. Hoping to get my hands on those Vienna guppies someday. Yeah, there's a few people breeding them and, and selling them online now, I think. I believe. I admit I waited for discounts and I order when I need stuff. I would, I would do the same thing. I do it with other companies where I know like like Bed Bath & Beyond. You almost feel guilty if you show up and you don't have a 20% discount coupon, right? So it's one of those things. You kind of know that, okay, they've got this discounting scheme. If I don't use a discount, I'm paying a higher price. And then like you guys should know with us, like, look, we're not going to do discounting. We're just going to bring the prices down as low as we can. And that's just where we're going to live. And that's just how it's going to be. And we're going to focus on other things. You know, the fear is when you think like, wait a second, am I missing out on a discount right now? Is that what's going on? You know, you don't want to miss out. And so we've just taken that away. Like, don't worry, you're not missing out. Nobody gets a discount. Well, that's not true. Uh, influencers get a discount and employees get a discount. But no, like, uh, no customers do. Hmm. 20 gallons, see her Vienna sausage tank. Yep. Yes, indeed. Well, in fact, you'll see that in that video I shot, because I went through some of them in that hour long video. There's some that are kind of like whales in there, so they're pretty chunky. Might might be some sausage, Vienna sausage. I wish I had been smart enough on camera to say that. Dang it. YouTube now recommends channels every time someone hosts you for Dean's Fish Room. Dean's a thought after guy. He's getting getting all the glamour with uh not as much of the work. He doesn't have to edit the video, which is awesome. Do we have TikTok? We don't. I don't have time to run TikTok. I, I think I've only ever like logged into TikTok the app once ever. And I was like, ugh, don't have time for this. I'll become an influencer just for a discount. Yep. That's a lot of people want to do that. Like you actually have to be an influencer. You actually have to be part of the team. You have to, you know try and help people and do all of that, not just, you know, cash in on discount. That's not what we're about. I mean, a lot of our influencers kind of got kicked to the curb because they weren't being active enough, you know, and not that they have to like shill our products, but I made a post in like the uh, brand ambassador forums, like if you don't reply to this by Thanksgiving, that was three months away, we're kicking you off the program and like over half of them never replied. So it's like, if you can't check in once in three months into the brand ambassador forum, well, that's how plugged in you are. So you got to go. I'm really enjoying the one hour a day. It's resulted in a renewed interest in the hobby. I had kind of become on autopilot for the last year. Exactly. Like you almost plan, or at least me, I almost plan to do more where it's like, okay, I know I got to spend an hour in here tomorrow. Ooh, I should start this project. I, I got plenty of time to do it. Like once I've made the time for it, now I'm doing all these things that I didn't have time for before, which is funny if I just had to make it a priority in my life. How high up on the list is the development of an aquarium co-op hang on back filter? Really low. Because it's going to be a lot of money and a lot of time. My hope is that uh, if I get to go to China this year or you know next year and that kind of stuff, I will just stumble upon like, great, this company has made an amazing filter. And I can tweak it, make it better, or it's great out of the box, and I'll just sell it. I'm always hoping, like, like let's look at the multi-test strips, right? 
how many test strip companies and that kind of stuff is in the aquarium world, right? Why couldn't they have done this? Because I chose not to. Like, and I'm, I'm going to make a video about it. I ordered a bunch of stupid expensive products. Like this right here is, uh, I needed more of it because I lost my other one. This is, uh, uh, where does it say? Oh, right here. So I, I, I actually sought this out because I had 7.0 pH stuff. It's in the other room. But our test strips only test 6.8 and 7.2. So I paid a stupid amount of money to have a scientific or like a lab grade company that makes stuff make a phosphate buffer pH 7.2 solution so that I can test and get an exact match on 7.2. Like, so just because we still get people like, oh, it's not mm. accurate. It's like compared to an API kit. It's like, but how do you know the API kit? is accurate like i'm using scientific grade stuff uh, and then i i spent some good money to get uh some more calcium tests i've got some more calcium tests at 150 ppm most of it is like a thousand ppm and way higher for all this other stuff and then i bought my own uh ph tester because people will say like well my ph tester and all that so i figure i can show them all kind of on camera and do the comparison and you know and i think what people need to remember is uh you know like factor in time and cost you know like oh well liquid test kit right you're into it for 30 bucks these you're into it for 17 bucks this thing i think i was into it for 30 or 40 bucks for just a ph meter um you can get some that are really expensive this is one of the cheaper ones because i think this is like hannah's a good company but they make some much more high-end ones and i think for the average person as a hobbyist you're not going to be like well i only buy the 250 dollars version and so i wanted to get like things people might actually use to compare against. And uh, yeah, so, but I, I, the point being, I think any of these aquatic companies could have made their test strips more reliable. Uh, and I don't know if it was just over years, like maybe, maybe every company started with like their test strips were amazing. And over years they either switched manufacturers or manufacturers got lazy or whatever, I don't know. But I just find it weird that, uh, a lot of the brands, which Tetris I really did like, they were they were fairly accurate. Um, I just find it weird that some could be so inaccurate, including didn't uh, didn't Ritz take on Mardell? Yeah, so Mardell. Let's see. Yeah, they did. So this is like these ones. These ones were never accurate for me. These Mardell ones for Fritz. And I was like, I think I even told them, like, why not make better ones? And it's just not a priority. Like the part of the problem I think could be, and I don't know, is like Mardell was purchased by Fritz. Right. And so maybe they don't have the scientists to do this, or maybe it's not a priority, or maybe they only want to spend money on developing new products and not like, like maybe when you acquire a company, you just go, okay, well, we had this many cells. We'll just let that be its thing. And we're not going to make it better. I don't know why though, you know, so, but these ones, the pH was always like, no matter what I would test, it'd be like, yeah, pH is low as it can go. Like, that's not right. And it wasn't good compared to other stuff. So I don't get it. I don't know. Try to keep, try to keep my, my, uh, test strips honest with the manufacturer and all that. Will there be a aquarium co-op heater one day? I hope not. And by that, I mean, if it has to be an aquarium co-op heater, probably means that no one else would do what, what needs to be done. I'm hoping some other companies goes, look, we need the best possible uh, heater. Boom. And I, we just sell that. that that's, it's so much easier for me to go, you did a great job. We'll sell that than it is to reinvent the wheel for us. Ugh. What's the shelf life on our brand of test strips? Two years from the manufacturer's date. Um, so typically how we run it is, as you saw, we run out, we run a real tight ship so that stuff lands right when we're running out. So, um, usually what you're going to do is you're probably going to get a test strip that is maybe about three months old. Um, cause I got to produce them, put them on a boat. There's a little bit of leg time there to get everything on the boat and then ship it to us. And then we'll be shipping it out. So, um, but that... I actually haven't been able to test like how long could they possibly go, but I think by law we have to put, or you can't advertise more than two years or something like that. 
maybe test strips became less popular, so they stopped making high-end ones? I mean, it could be, but I just... So, high-end and working are two different things. Like, just because, like, cheeseburgers become unpopular doesn't mean I start making, like, the worst cheeseburgers I can. Like, you should still make a good cheeseburger, right? It's just you won't make very many of them. So, I mean, I, I know this. I know this. Here's what I know. I know that... Big corporations, they change management a lot of times. Like when we were meeting with API, this is, this is a 100% legit story. When we were meeting with API and going, we're going to drop you, you keep raising prices on meds and all of this, they called me a liar to my face. Then I brought all our invoices in from the wholesaler and proved them wrong in front of all the people there. The VP was there, director of marketing was there, everyone was there. Then they made the guy that was uh, in charge of all of Aquatics API, they're like, well, this is not going good because we already were like battling. If this guy called me a liar, I proved him wrong. They made that guy leave the table. Then I was just, Randy and I were sitting with the VP of, uh, of API and we're like, look, we sell a ton of your product. We like your product. We just can't keep paying more for your product. So it's like, we bought 30 grand in one go. We, we put a $30,000 price or order in, you raise the price on us? Like, that can't happen. Like, we're selling, like, to give context, when we stopped, we discontinued selling their products. We were still the biggest West Coast vendor. Anyway. So, we're trying to, like, we got to buy straight from you. We're like, what can you do to make it so that our price is increasing? We pay more for your test kit, you're a wholesaler, than we do from Amazon. It's cheaper to buy from Amazon than it is from you. And they never just got their act together. And the point of the story was, the guy that had to leave the table... He was put in charge of Aquatics because he had grown the candy portion of API. API is owned by Mars, right? So you always hear Mars systems at Petco's. That's the tank systems and Mars candy bars. So just because that guy really could crush the candy game, they brought him in as like, okay, grow our Aquatics department. He, could not, he couldn't wrap his head around map. Oh, I got some in my throat. Minimum advertised price. So when I'm trying to tell them, like, look, if you let Amazon sell these uh, test kits at $22 and I got to pay $23, do you not see where the problem is? And he would just go, oh, it's only temporary or this and that. And I'm like, people only have to buy this once every two years, like temporary or not. And there's no, you don't have to worry about uh, map pricing. No one, no one freaks out when you're like, this candy bar was sold for 42 cents. I'm never going to be able to sell them at my gas station now. That didn't exist in the candy world. And so that's what happens in these big corporations a lot of times. You bring in, like, the sales rep for API, Aquatics Division. She was brought in from another company, and she was good at selling dog products. But she doesn't know aquariums. That happens all of the time. And so when you get successful people that don't know the product working for successful people that don't know the product, that work for successful people that don't know the product, they just always defer to, like, Hold on. Well, let me let me ask the the scientists. Yeah, scientists has good, and they just they just rely on that instead of testing a product and going, oh, I get it. This is why this thing sucks. So it's really frustrating. I think that's why I think that's why uh, the big companies don't uh, don't make their own products better. It's because they just they trust in the original makers or the person invented or whatever it was, and they're not someone who's using the product. You know, take a test of that cheeseburger. Is it good or isn't it? Welcome, Aqua Cat. That's a cool cat right there. Aquarium has been set up for a week with a sponge filter that has been seeded for two years. Diatoms grown on the sand and a wood piece. Zero ammonia, zero nitrate, 20 ppm nitrate. Can I move my rabbit snails in? Yeah, most likely. Snails are a little bit hardier to any kind of ammonia spike or anything anyway. And it sounds like you've got a little bit of algae you're going to be snacking on, and they'll eat some of the poop. Or, I mean, dig the, the algae will digest some of their waste. So probably about ready to start moving in slowly. <laughs> he tested Darkula for six years. Heaters would be decades. Yeah. I think I proposed at seven years, but we didn't get married until 11 years. He'll know before I will. Or the exact numbers, but... Uh... Yeah, I just, I'm not in a big rush for anything in life of like, when you rush, you make mistakes. That's where mistakes get made. Like, let's, we'd much rather roll out or, or, you know, invest or, you know, 
wager or whatever it is on like more of a sure bet. And the more data you can collect on anything, the better decision you can make. What heater do I recommend that's currently in the market? Uh, like the ones that I still use are typically the, e, uh, not Eheim, uh, the Fluval LED ones. Uh, that being said, I do use a lot of other heaters we're trying, and they mostly fail after a point of time. So, um, yeah, like another good, ex like I can come up with two more great examples of great products that shouldn't have been ruined. Uh, Aquion had the best, well, so let's rewind a couple. <laughs> Marineland Stealth Heaters. They got to a point where they were just bulletproof and great. The black heater, they were encased in plastic, and they were really, really good. Then they switched manufacturers, started blowing up on people. Then they sold that to, well, sold. It's all owned by like the same giant corporation, Aquion and, and, uh, and uh, Marineland, I believe. But then they switched manufacturers, and now they're blowing up all the time. And, and like every time I go to Dean, he's got another one that's split. You know, because, uh, yeah, so, so that's another product that was like that. Uh, the other product was the uh, original, was it Penguin Powerhead? Who, who made it originally? Or, oh, Marineland. It was Marineland again. So Marineland had the, the Powerheads I really liked. Then Cobalt actually started making them. They got the contract with the old one, but they switched. So Marineland switched to a cheaper manufacturer. Then they were having problems. Marineland got, or not Marineland. Cobalt gobbled up the other manufacturer that made the good ones. So then they were more expensive though, right? So Marineland, they used to be like 40 bucks. Then they uh, switched manufacturers. Now they're like 25 bucks, but they sucked. Marine, and then Cobalt gets them and now they're like 45 bucks, which they should be, but they last forever. I just don't understand why companies would, like, I'm, I'm a businessman. I will 100% switch to a cheaper company if the quality is the exact same. There's no reason not to. But if someone's not doing the testing and everything and quality is worse, I think that's a bad business decision every time. Unless there's no alternative. Like, let's say that company closed down. If you have no alternative, you have no alternative. I get that. But, you know, too often it's like, well, we could save. We save 20%, save 30%. That's going to mean $400,000 in profit this year if we do that. That's not the right move. Where... Yes, you'll get that the first year when everyone's going, wait, these suck after a year. But then years two, three, four, five, six, all of a sudden, why are sales down to 20% of what they were? They don't last. Words out. You're not making any, you're not making more money now. You're making less money. <clears throat> Another example, Tetra had the Tetra whisper filter. Thing dang near never broke. All the air raptor years replaced impellers. They discontinued it and came out with their new filters. And the new filters break more and, and, and all of that. There was such a backlash. They came back. They brought it out again because stores really liked it. But they called it the Tetra uh, Whisper Legacy or something like that. Let me see. Tetra Whisper Legacy filter maybe? See if I can find it. Hmm. I'm only seeing the new one. Tetra, what do they call it? Tetra Whisper Filter. I can only, is it this one? Yeah, it's, it's this one. Let me show you guys. So they rebranded and came out with the Whisper IQ and, and all these other new Whisper ones that were would break, basically. The e EX version, all these versions. And the one that never broke was this one. And they rebranded it back, this is like 10 years ago when I was, selling it <clears throat> but this one uh would never break it had the correct plastic and it just was great and uh but it was an everlasting everlasting gobstopper is it never broke and so people weren't buying more of them and even though they were getting all their money off the cartridges right and here's another here was the 30 to 60 gallon version of it even though they were getting all their money off the cartridges it wasn't enough they wanted newer sales and so what they would do uh we had uh, local companies or local fish stores, right? And they would work out deals <clears throat> and it was bring in any filter we'll give you that new Whisper IQ filter so that you'd have to buy all the cartridges. So they were like trying to get all these models that would last forever and a day off the market bring in all these new ones right? 
and to sell, they'd sell the same amount of cartridges. They both use cartridges. But on one hand, imagine this in any other industry. So you're telling me I bring my, I, I bring my 2004 Toyota Camry in and you'll give me a, a 2021 Toyota Camry? Heck yes. What you didn't know was, oh no, the, the 2021 Toyota Camry was garbage. And, oh, what do you mean oil changes are $10,000? What is this? I've been bamboozled, right? But it kind of one of those seems too good to be true. Guess what? It was too good to be true. And so that was a real, but they were, they ran that for years and they would, they would just partner up with local place and go, look, let them bring a filter in, give them this filter. We'll make all the money on the cartridges. Good, good. You'll look good as a company. Like, wow, giving away brand new filters. Look at them. So good. Mm -mm. Nope. Wasn't good at all. Wasn't good for anyone, really. Wasn't good for Tetra. Wasn't good for uh, the the store because the store got the brunt of it. If they come back like, hey, this thing's not working. It stopped working. It's broken. Blah, blah, blah. All this stuff. And uh, yeah, and it wasn't good for the customer. It was it was bad on all, all parts. All right. I was so disappointed with the new Sarah Onip tabs too. Fish don't love it. And it's so messy. I... I, I struggle with it. Unless there is a reason why you can't manufacture the same product that was doing amazing, why would you make it worse? I mean, I know intentions are to make it better, but better on who? Better for the customer, better for the fish, or better for the profits? And I, I'm convinced that great products make great profits. Like, we don't have a problem making profits generally, which is we're lucky, but we focus on make it better. Just make it better, make it better, make it better. Even when it's like, uh, like on one product we designed, the the price went up by like 25 percent just because i wanted the cord to be 15 feet long like the product was kind of cheap um but most companies would be like wait so a six foot cord is 25 percent less just give them a six foot cord but i know if i want to put it inside that aquarium i need a 15 foot cord if i want to put it in my 230 gallon tank my 125 gallon tanks i need more than six feet from floor where you plug it in to the top of a six foot tank is like five feet already. And then what, I'm only gonna go one foot into my aquarium? No. And like, if you're, if you're an aquarist, you know, well, all my power is in the left side of my stand, but I want this item, let's say it's a heater, I want it on the right side of my tank. So I gotta go five feet up. Oh, I gotta go six feet over. Guess what? I'm just gonna do easy math. That's 11 feet. I know it's less, you're going diagonal, but that's 11 feet. Then you gotta come back into the aquarium, right? So you're a minimum of 13 feet. Wouldn't you like to have a little bit, another couple feet of slack so it's not just like taut the whole way, right? So those are the decisions where I'm convinced the way reason we're doing so well is because we have at every level in the company, actual aquarists working on the products, watching quality control, even from shipping out. A lot of our people in the warehouse are actual true aquarists with multiple aquariums, right? And so they can see when something's going wrong. They can see when, hey, this isn't right about this product. Hey, this changed. Hey, this is wrong, right? Uh, like one time we had, we had some extreme pellets where it was the wrong pellet size to label. And someone at the warehouse noticed this, right? And so we got feedback from you guys. We sent out a few, but someone also noticed it. And that only happens when you have people that actually know products or actually using products and all of that. So... It's a very important thing, I think, to have not just professionals working on a product, but aquarium, prof not aquarium professionals, but someone who uses that product and uses other products. That's one of the reasons why I test all kinds of competitor products to know, have they invented something amazing? Are they doing it worse? How do I know I'm better than the other test strips? How do I know we're better than this? Because I got to use them. 921 likes? How are we going to get to 1,000 likes? We can get to 1,000, right? Oh my gosh, sorry, it's already been almost two hours. Can I still buy Aquarium Co-op Auto Feeders? I uh, thought there was a hidden link still. Started to travel again, but I need to set them up. Uh, kind of. Uh, we ran out of those feeders a long time. Well, not a long time, but like six, eight months ago or something. Maybe longer. COVID, like the whole COVID year and a half thing, like somehow my brain is about one month, even though it's been 18 months or whatever it's been. But uh, yeah, so it's been however long it's been. But um, but no, there's a new feeder coming out. Hopefully it'll be next month. It's on a boat right now to us. So and it, I, I, that's why I set 20 some of them up yesterday. So it's coming. 
Just don't bombard candy. When's it coming? Uh, like, it's not here yet. It will be. So. Oh, man, we might hit it. What are we trying to hit? The 50? Is it? We can't. Are we that close to getting 50 and making Zenzo swim with Brian Shram? I feel bad for him if we actually hit it. Let's see. Where am I? Where am I clicking? Here, maybe? Nope. That's an old chat, I think. Let's see here. Uh, here we go. Here we go. See if it updates fast enough. Yeah, see this thing's leg, and it still says 2,483. Let me let me try getting back into it. I hit refresh, but that didn't do it. Yeah, it still says 2,483. So someone, we just got to count how many. At the end of the stream, it'll probably say. Yeah, they've been doing a lot of work on YouTube and the membership stuff and breaking stuff all over the place. Not great. Oh, we're almost to 1,000 likes, not members. I got you, I got you. How close are y'all to the planet tank light? Was looking to getting a flu wall 3.0, but trying to hold out. I think at the bare minimum, at least September or October. But it, it literally could be two years from now because I'm not going to launch it until it's ready. So if everything goes right, all the testing goes right. We also have, I have like 20, you know, maybe it's 24 or 36 of these new prototype lights. Like you can watch going on and off over there. They've been sitting at customs for two weeks also in LA. So, but if everything went right in a best case scenario, maybe September, October. Um, so it sounds like you should probably buy a light now because you're at least, you know, five months away or whatever. Maybe not five months. Yeah, I guess about five months away. So, um, and that's at a best case scenario. Might not be that, right? Like, and you still don't know anything about it. What if you like totally see it and you're like, wait, that's not cool at all. Maybe we designed a terrible light. So you already know what uh, you already know. The flu wall lights are amazing. So I, I'd st I mean, I still use those lights. So production is insane right now. I would expect twice the normal duration. Oh yeah, definitely. We trust me. We usually run as a well-oiled machine and don't have these outages and things like that. But um, you know, you just gotta get rolled to punches. A failed co-op product is probably still 10x better than the big box products. I mean, maybe, but a failed product is never good anyway. Like, so people that have our old auto feeders, they the ones that worked work amazing. The ones that are DOA out of the box is over 5% threshold, and I just won't do that. Uh, we track every item. We track did it arrive dead. We track like whether it's a plant or not. We track all of that, and anything that crosses the 5%, we take a hard look at, and we go, what do we got? We got to change manufacturer. Do we got to change the design? Do we have to stop selling it? What is it? And, uh, you know, the good news is on most, I think almost every product we sell, we're less than 1% failure rate. And, and my, my fear is this, like, what if we had a 5% failure rate and, and, mo and half the people weren't reporting that it failed? So we actually have a 10% failure rate, right? So we, we focus really hard on it because every time someone has a bad experience, if they keep having that, we're going to lose customers. And so we've been very good at, Cutting out everything that, like, I, I can't even think we found a product that was actually having that bad because we test things so well. But I, I know that there are a lot of companies that will have much higher DOA rates for plants or any type of good, or the product just doesn't work. I mean, there's products from companies we carry, you know, I, and I, I test everything, whether, you know, I don't want to throw people under the bus, but lots of companies we partner with. Half the products I shoot down go, nope, not good enough. Not good enough for my customers, basically. It's like, they can go buy it from someone else they want, but this product doesn't work. And a great example of that would be Expel P. Expel P, I couldn't get to work uh, the way I wanted it to work. I've got more Camelanus Redworm. I finally have guppies in here that I'll be able to treat with it. If it works well, I will, if I can repeat what the success Robert got, then we will sell it. But I won't sell something unless I can try it. And I hadn't had Camelanus Redworm. It wasn't working on planaria the way I wanted it to. Randy's been doing some testing with dosages and stuff like that, and he's had some success with it, right? But if I can't replicate it, if I can't, you know, if I can't put the ingredients together to make a, a sandwich, how can I be expected to teach you how to do it and send you the, the, the sandwich ingredients and have you be successful? So if I can't do it, I won't sell it. And, you know, that... On one hand, it's like egomaniac, but the other part is, how can I try and help you with something I can't do, 
right? That doesn't make sense. Like, to me, it doesn't make sense. All right. My panels are falling again. How important is it to have the thermometer in the Zip Brian Tripatri? Mine was broken. Uh, I don't use a thermometer at all. But if you want one, send us a, an email or send Candy an email, customer service, and we'll send you out a new thermometer. But it is in Celsius anyway, so it's kind of a pain in the butt. I personally don't use any, but you were supposed to get one now broken, and we will definitely make that right if you would like. No problem at all. Uh, I have over 30 feeders. I love the way I can shake. Wait, I can shake down and check back later to see at a glance if I need to do something. My 30 feeders, I love the way I can shake down, check back later to see at a glance if I need to do something. I'm guessing like how much food is in there maybe? Yeah, the new feeders have a new way to even, uh, even uh, refill them and stuff so you don't have to remove the drum. It's, it's awesome. It's pretty cool. Uh, what's it like working with brands that you are also competing with? Uh, we don't really work with brands that we compete with. We tried to at the beginning of YouTube and they all just stabbed us in the back. <laughs> so that sucked. But like, like, cause most brand, we usually won't work with brands that will sell retail. Um, so it's usually not a problem, but working with brands, the brands that we do work with, the reason we work with them is because they actually want the products to get better. They want to keep improving. They, they actually care about the hobby. All those things really matter. And when those, we can't find companies that care about those things. We just end up making our own product, right? So like Eheim's a great example. Like they do make good products, but they've kind of pulled out of the US. They're not trying to offer good support to stores. They're not trying to offer good support to customers. And so instead of selling like we, so we look at the timeline, right? We used to sell a bunch of Eheim auto feeders and I like that feeder, right? The problem is it was like that API scenario of like, oh, our buy price is $22. And I think it literally was $22. And uh, you could buy them on Amazon for $22. So that doesn't work for us because we can't ship it to you for free. We have to pay money, right? So I think we were selling them originally at 27 and we found out we were like, if someone only orders a, a feeder, we're losing money. So then we started selling it for 32. Then people say, you're too overpriced. And it's like, yeah, I know. I buy them on Amazon. It, it sucks for us. Then Eheim like pulled out of America, basically. So none of our wholesalers even sold them anymore. So short of us buying them on Amazon and then reselling to you at a higher price, which is not a great move, uh, we developed our first e easy feeder, and I really liked it. And the price point was twenty bucks, which is great. However, uh, we had more than a five percent DOA rate, so I, I still can't figure out what was the culprit, and I couldn't replicate it and that kind of stuff. So we stopped selling it. Now we've got this new one that we're going to be selling, uh, and the price point is going to be good. There's I don't want to give away all the all the secrets, but it's it's an upgrade in several different parts, which you would think like, can you even upgrade a feeder? I, th I think there's two areas it can, and we upgraded both of those. Um, and I think this time, taking what we learned from last time in production, we tested a lot more and all of that, and we, you know, we, we opened a bunch more. I have one right here, actually, but uh, yeah. So hopefully this one we learned from, uh, well, we just got to test more and more and more and more and more. And uh, yeah, but working with companies that want to get better is great. Working with companies that just want to make money is not so great because then you just have two people wanting to make money and I make money when products are amazing. They make money when products are cheap. And so we're at the polar opposite of those two when it comes to that. What do I think about the Oase hang on back canister filter? I don't know that one. I'd have to look it up. I don't know if I know the hang on back canister. Without looking, so they are they are great at just rebranding stuff. So I wonder if it'll be just uh, someone else's hang on back canister filter. Let's see if I can find it. Um, I don't see any of these that are hang on back yet. Oh wait, right here. Okay, it's it's. I don't think maybe maybe it's not. Maybe they they innovated a little bit here. It would be this one, I think. The Flow Smart. I mean, it's very similar um, premise to uh, like the Phoenix hang on backs and that kind of stuff. I haven't used one, so I, you have to put aside the like, how quiet are they? How efficient are they? I have no idea. I'll say this from this picture, 
Looks like a terrible idea to have this loop de loo. Who wants that on their aquarium? Like, look at that. What's that? Oh, that's the tube that gets covered in algae and looks terrible, like in, in, in brown mold. I'll see if I can click on this more to get some more context here. Self priming. Yeah, I would expect so because it's, it, it's at aquarium level. Yep. Space saving, maybe. Uh, I'll tell you the things that I. Oh, that's it. I don't get any more, like, more pictures. Yeah, the thing that they don't really tell you. So you notice how this is like on the side of an aquarium? I think that's a disservice because most people are going to put it behind their aquarium. And what you don't know is trying to get this thing out to service it dumps a bunch of gunk in your tank and it's kind of a nightmare. Unless you have, you can just lift it all the way out. That kind of works. But it's not the same when it's behind. Uh, but it looks fairly similar set up to uh, like a, almost like a fluol filter. You got sponge on one side and, and bi rings on the other. And I, I will say like all filters kind of work. So I have no idea what the price point of this thing is. In general, I find them to be overpriced on stuff. So let me see if I can find what the price of this thing is. There we go. One on Amazon. That'll be a good, good start. $70.99. That doesn't seem so bad. But I would say it's probably very similar. Here's, here's the Phoenix uh, PX360. Very similar filter. We sold these years ago. And you can set it side by side, just like the, the ZoomEd ones are like this too. Set it side by side, or you can hang it just like this. See, it's hanging. And you get at least these black tubes. Because what, what they're not showing, this is what drives me nuts. So if we go back to these pictures, right? And this is all marketing gimmick, and I always call companies out on this BS, but yes, this looks amazing, except, okay, how many of you are actually hanging pendant lights? This light is hanging from the ceiling because you don't see it on the aquarium, but you can tell, right? You can tell, let me get this right here. You can tell there's shine here. So you know that it's being lit all the way from the top, right? Now, what happens when you, what happens to your aquarium glass when you shine light on it and there's any nutrients in it? You glow about algae, right? So how many of you want to disconnect these pipes and run a brush through them to clean them and not look terrible. Probably none of you. So that's where you go to like a Phoenix filter. And I don't sell this filter either, but uh, they have the black pieces here so that no light can shine in on it and get you that problem. Now you can still get on the inside here, but this part's easier to detach and clean. Still, I would have preferred it to be black. Um, but you know, it's not being shown how it's actually being used. And so what I, so one of the things that we do at our company is I always ask for what are our lifestyle shots? And what is a lifestyle shot? A lifestyle is trying to show you, uh, let's look at like plant supplies or something. Uh, let's see, right here. Trying to show you how it would actually look in your aquarium or around your aquarium or what an actual aquarium looks like. So this would be your standard, like a shot like they've got, right? Like just showing the product, but trying to show like, Let's get some hands in there, a real person. Let's try to see a real person's aquarium. You know, let's start to look at this like proportionally and just looking what it's going to look like, trying to get lifestyle type shots. I think maybe with Easy Green, let's see if we have uh, some lifestyle shots. Well, we should have for, yeah, I think, I think that's on our to-do list. We don't have, or we used to, but we don't have lifestyle shots of these. But I know with like uh, maybe Ikex, we have some lifestyle shots. Oh, this is, by the way, pond version of Ikex, twice the strength, not much more money. So just know that. But yeah, lifestyle shots of, you know, we're pouring it so you can see like, oh, you're going to get a stained bottle eventually. Like that's, that's a thing, you know. You can see the, we've got the, the bigger version behind it. This size right here, this is the smaller size. The four ounce size is this. So you can see all of these. We try to do is, as best we can to give you real life pictures instead of super doctored, uh, impractical, you know, like they do have the hand size, which is nice, right? But that that's the thing right here. Like when you see this, like the hand size of this, this filter has got to be tiny. How many liters does it hold? I don't know. Not that this filter is huge either, but uh, seems fairly small. But again, so all the way back to the point, where I feel Oase products are kind of overpriced and not great designs sometimes. Uh, 4363 versus, 
oh well it was same same amazon uh versus 70 so it's it's not quite du quite double the price but um you know i think they could do better you know there might be something to the heater i don't like the way these like uh the heater gasket thing is because it's easy to break them but but this one 129 so oh well it's a, it's the thermo 100 so they don't have a okay well that doesn't even matter i thought this was the hang on back version i thought it might be kind of cool to have the hang on back outside the tank in a nano tank but they don't even make it so yeah I'll, I will also state there are probably like 25% of companies that will just never work with aquarium co-op because they know we're vocal and will call them out on their BS. And so they don't even want that nightmare, which I, I respect. I respect that, you know, you get the good and the bad with us. Like we will praise you and sell a ton, but if you screw up, we will also call you out on it until you fix it. Uh, well, that's not true. We call you out if you don't fix it. If something happens and you're quick to fix it, it's fine. And, the, and you guys will understand it. Like, yep, yeah, we get it. Mistakes happen. If you like willingly uh, neglect stuff, that's when we'll call you out. You know, like Fluval, like you're just bad at shipping, straight up bad at it. You got to get better. Like you're you're the reason. We're, why are we developing a light? Because you can't keep us stocked. That's why. Like we love Fluval lights, and you raise the price on them. It used to be four foot light, one hundred eighty nine ninety nine. Now it's two twenty nine ninety nine. Right? I realize there's tariffs. We'll pay tariffs too on this light. Like you gotta you gotta figure out how to make your way in the world. How long to hatch brine, and are people using too much air? Uh, I don't know. I don't. It, that's subjective. Like, well, you'd have to look at each person to know how much air. It doesn't take a whole lot of air to hatch brine. In fact, you can hatch brine trip without any air, technically, if you're not doing crazy high, um, crazy high uh, densities, right? Uh, but as far as how long, I like to go at least 24 hours. Although sometimes I'm lazy and I harvest early because that's like, oh, I only like today. Let's say I had to. So I had a busy day after the stream and beforehand I could feed the brine trip. I would knowing like, oh, I won't be able to feed till I might not be able to feed at all. I'm not going to go back till midnight. I would feed early. Uh, but in a perfect world, I think Dean has it right. Hatching every 36 hours, but he runs two brine trips. It's way too much work. And Dean's is better than I am. I think in a perfect world, you go 36. I go 24 because it's easy for me. Uh, let's see here. Finally caught my first live stream in what feels like six months. Well, welcome back, uh, Colin. You, you got the taco, so you've been a member for a while. So glad to see you around. Have you ever kept largemouth bass? Uh, or do I have any interest in keeping them? Not really. I mean, maybe a little bit in peacock bass, but they're a little too aggressive for what I like. I don't like to watch fish. I, wa I watch fish to kind of like mellow out and, and just be like, oh, that's neat. And, you know, it, to see them uh, worrying about, like, maybe wounds or disease or anything, like that gets a little a little trouble for me. No channel, but I keep mainly Corey's Rams, and my favorites are my Tanginicans. Yeah, I, I, well, I should order some Cipachromus. I could do a pond of Cipachromus. I'd enjoy those. I still like Cipachromus. I wonder if they jump out of a pond too easy, though. Yes, to receive a text message, check out the description below, and uh, you'll receive a t text message when I don't screw up, and right before I go live, usually about five minutes, and if you haven't hit that like button, hit that like button, because that notifies the next person. Basically, every time someone hits a like button, YouTube will send out another notification to a fan that isn't in this live stream, so every time you hit like, think of it like you're inviting someone else to check it out. Yeah, the likes will lag behind. So if you haven't reloaded the page, it might be like, there's only 200. Like, no, 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 you got to reload the page. It'll it'll tell you. So you got that uh, you know, leg going on. I'm hatching and feeding one tablespoon of eggs every 24 hours. Lots of babies in the fish room. Yes, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't ever hatched brine shrimp before, like, I should make that a new challenge at some point, maybe after the summer or maybe during the summer, but hatch brine shrimp for like 30 days straight and i promise you your fish room will be bursting with life more than it ever has it it literally is like an on and off switch in my fish room if you're hatching brine shrimp every day fish as far as the eye can see if i'm not hatching brine shrimp every day they make some fish and the colony sustain and everything does okay but it, it's it's almost like two different levels of fish keeping honestly it's it's really 
quite a bit different. And, uh, you know, kind of when I'm on the Hatch and Brian Shrimp and Shrimpin? Brian Shrimp wagon, things are amazing. If I fall off the wagon, and that's how it goes for me, by the way, it goes for, oh yeah, I did it every day for months. And then like, oh, I missed one, two. Oh no, I haven't done it in four months. Like I, cause I feel guilty. Like I'm not gonna let the shrimp just die. So I like, oh, I better go do it. And then if after I feed, I see them and they're like, wow, these guys are doing so amazing. I start another hatch. But if I don't start a hatch, like, ah, oh, well, I'll, I'll start tomorrow. Ah, I'll start tomorrow. Ah, I'm pretty sure I just don't do it. So. Oh, it says right here, I can see, it says we have 27 new members this live stream. So, still 23 away from Brian Shrimp in Zenzo's underwear. Where'd my chat go? Right here. Shrimping ain't easy. Tell you what. On the shrimping wagon, that's right. How many of the ponds still need stocking? Do you have any species you're looking for? Uh, I do want to get some longfin white clouds in, which I, I know I got to have at the store. I just got to get some. Um, let's see. If I set up 22 feeders, I think there's 55 ponds. I think that means there's literally 33 ponds to fill still. Although I filled one last night, so maybe 32. And uh, yeah. MD just got on the brine shrimp train. He had a bag that had salt and eggs mixed. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, like. Uh, the the kits from san francisco bay will come that way but the eggs aren't that high quality we thought about doing that but it would raise the price to ship and it was going to raise the price because we'd have to have so you got the brine shrimp manufacturer and the salt manufacturer you have to make one of those two um do the work and then we'd put it out and there were some companies in china that were doing that but their eggs weren't that good so we tested it a lot and uh we found that we think the best price point was just eggs for people. So, and and you had to get really good mixing. If you didn't get really good mixing, you could have too much salt, not enough eggs, that kind of stuff. Or like, oh, I did a hatch and like I got half as many eggs. Or Brian, I did yesterday because it how good you're mixing all that. Does any of the eggs get damaged? So we just said, hey, let's keep it easy. You put your eggs in, you pick the salt you want, and we'll go from there. When can we see the new feeders? Uh, probably in a couple weeks. Um, the reason why, and I'll be honest, is there is some competitor products out there. Some other companies have used this uh, template. So kind of how a product goes, you, you look at manufacturers and there's some other people that sell it on other websites, but we did make changes to it. That's the thing. And we are gonna put our, our name and our guarantee behind it. So another website, you might buy it, there's no guarantee. With us, we're putting a one-year warranty on it. Now, that might not mean a lot to some people, but, uh, you know. And it's got our directions. The directions that come stock from the company are not great. And uh, we, we did make changes, though. There are legit some changes. And it went through multiple rounds. It was like, yeah, it's pretty good. We could just sell this. But I was like, no, I want this change. And it's not it's not mind-blowing, right? We The biggest change we did, really, was uh, was one. Uh, we did, uh, it was in a 24-hour format. I prefer a 12-hour format. So we made that change. And the, the thing that I think we're going to develop down the road is a larger uh, a larger food chamber. Now, the reason I didn't is because I didn't want to make a food chamber change, put it on the same motor, and find out at 13 months, that motor burns out because we really can't afford to have one feeder that had a 5% DOA rate. And then if this next feeder is not uh, a grand slam, we're going to look like, you know, we're never going to be able to release a feeder where everyone loves it. Because they're like, oh, we've seen you do it twice before. You haven't done it. So I'm not going to make any change, any, you know, big changes to it. Uh, I'm going to sell it as an, an add-on later if you want a bigger drum that could hold more food. Because, uh, like, for me, my ponds, we feed a lot of food, and so I need bigger drums, but I didn't want to come out of the gate that way and, um, you know, have any problems. And our guarantee is the best guarantee around, by the way, because if your thing breaks, we just make you show us a video of it being broken, and then we send you out a new one. It's not like we don't make you send it back. We don't make you do any of this crazy stuff. Like, we believe you. We know stuff will break. Things happen. And so our guarantee is, look, if something's wrong, just show us how it went wrong. So one, we can make sure that that's not a, a thing that's going on for a long time or like with a lot of products. We want to document that. And then two, 
uh, we just want to make sure we're not getting scammed, right? Like, and we don't take it to the extreme of like, you know, if it's a heater, you got to send the heater in, you got to cut the cord, you got to do all this. Like, what? There was some story I was hearing the last couple of weeks. Like, someone said they made them cut the cord to a light or or a heater or something, and then they denied their claim. So now they had they had like something that was like kind of faulty. They like clipped the cord. And then they're like, actually, we deny the claim. So now they're, they don't even have like one that like half works. Now they have one that just doesn't work at all. So that only loses you a customer for life at that point. We'll see you later, Barbara Jackson. Say hello to your daughter. Any idea when the new multi-test strips will be back in stock? Well, they're sitting two states away from us. And basically that means any day they could actually arrive to us. So it could be tomorrow, could be a whole other week if, if customs doesn't do what they need to be doing. So we will, uh, we play it by ear. We have most products are in stock, which is awesome. But the test strips, I realize a lot of people want. A lot of people want the, the test strips, but uh, Fluval made me cut the cord to my light. See, I find that hilarious because like I could, I could take this, right? Like, I could take this cord and I could cut it. I can also just watch a YouTube video on how to put it back together. It's not that hard to either solder or just use some butt connectors and put it back together, shrink wrap it, boom, you're good to go. So I, I think it's one of those like, I want the minimally invasive way to prove that your light's not working, right? Or, or whatever, whatever problem you're having with. Give me some reasonable proof we'll take care of you after that because we track it on the back end there we, we did we fired our first customer ever for this reason uh it was they had done like 12 or 14 orders with us and 62 percent of the orders required almost a full refund they were basically never happy with any product we would ever send them and we didn't i guess we didn't actually fire them yet we just told them that we were no longer willing to uh, replace products without you sending it back to us. Because up until that point, we had always like, here's another one, here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. And now it's like, no, no, no. You got to send it back on your money. There's no way that 62% of everything we're sending you is not working. Because like, company-wide, we have less than 1%. So when you have one customer that's at 62%, you know, like, this is the worst luck ever. And it's like, yeah, it's not just like two in a row. Like, okay, things happen. Like, wow, somehow... This customer had a problem three times in a row. It's another thing when it's like, okay, that's a lot out of the 12 or 14 or whatever it was orders. And so we still didn't cut them off. We just told them in the future, if you're going to need replacements or you're not happy with the product, you have to send it back to us first and then we will accommodate you accordingly. And so hopefully that has solved that problem. Which it sucks because it's, you know, you hate to, you hate to find out when you feel like someone's taking advantage. And they could have the worst string of luck. There's always that like, what do you mean you flipped it and it landed on heads 272 times in a row? Like that could be happening. But that's why we want to, um, uh, you know, say, okay, we'll send it back. Because if it comes back and it is like broken, like, okay, well, something's going on between you and us. Figure out like, is it Ace Ventura delivering that package or kicking it, throwing it over the roof, all that kind of stuff? All right. I never fired a customer at once threatened to promote an employee to a customer. That's funny. Yeah, they just want free stuff. I mean, we have our own, you know, percent of people that file false uh, things like they never got it. We, we fight them on PayPal and we do all of that. And, you know, there is just that. When you, when you ship 15,000 orders, you're going to have like two or three of those a month probably. And we have to fight it and all that. And it's just irritating that that's um that's the, there's like a new meta basically that there's like a way what is it there's a lot of theft and stuff going on with like the uh pay over six months there's like a way to which is why we don't do that but uh there's like a way to like get stuff pay it over six months like file with your credit card company it undoes those payments and you just keep everything so like man that's and it's becoming like a big problem for a lot of vendors. So they're, it's just sad that, you know, there's not a better way to do it, I guess. 
When I worked at a garden center, we had to cut off a customer as they were having like $800 a month out of a thousand in sales. It was uncomfortable and sad. Yeah. And that's the thing is because you're, you're like nonchalantly kind of like, I think you're lying about this, but you do know, like there could be like, this could actually be legit. Like there is a crazy series of events where your lawnmower is broken every month for the past four months. Like that could happen, but you know, and it's especially harder when you don't get to see the product or we don't get to see anything. Like, you know, there are a lot of times people won't send a picture and we'll just like, okay, well, we'll take care of you anyway. Like everyone gets the benefit of the doubt. Pretty much if you press us, we'll refund your money once. And then after that, like, okay, if you're pressing us more than once and you won't show any proof, well, because I mean, there's some people that will order from us that won't have a cell phone or they don't have a good way to take a picture or a video. You know, they might be older. They might, you know, there might be a reason. And so... You know, we just kind of talk through them a bit and like, I, they're probably telling the truth. Let's just make it good on them and, and uh, you know, we'll track it. And, you know, we keep track. Every time someone gets returned, it's tracked on your account. And I don't want to, I'm not trying to discourage anyone from returning or having broken items because we're just looking for outliers, right? There's some where like, wow, you're way out here. Something's going wrong. We know that things happen. We do definitely know that. So we're not afraid to make things right. But we also, we know that by being so easy on the return process will be taken advantage of. But I also know more of you people will buy from us because we are that way. And so it probably balances out in our favor, which is why we keep doing it. But we can't let someone just run amok and be like, well, I got 27 football lights for free. They all don't work. Like I always tell the story, well, I've told the story before. We had a, a person who claimed that three times the Fluval light was stolen off of their porch. Well, actually, I think it was stolen twice. The third one, they, they got it. Like, hmm, what are the odds? Like, I can believe one. I can believe one got stolen off someone's porch, but twice? And then, like, because we, on the third one, we're like, we're not sending another one. Like, we'll refund your money, but we're not sending another one because that we're already down hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Making a whole bunch of tacos while listening? Yum. I could eat some tacos. I lost my aquarium co-op orders in a boating accident. We've heard it all. We've heard it all. It's, I mean, there's, there's when you ship 15,000 orders, there's just X amount that's going to be like, my neighbor's cat ate my dog and my dog had eaten the order. And you're like, so there's no way it's coming back. I'm like, okay, that's, Chalk that one up to like, all right, we got that one out of the way. Like, what do you mean the, you know, you had on the back of your motorcycle and you were doing backflips and it fell off? You know, there's always something crazy. Remember, subscriptions could go towards returns of scam losses. I mean, it does. That's the thing is everything we do goes into one big pot and then it kind of, we just, you know, uh, it, yes, memberships definitely help. YouTube uh, revenue helps. Retail store helps. Online sales help. And it's all, uh, you know, like the retail store gets really slow during the summer a lot of times. And so online sales really help, right? Um, and then, you know, retail does really well during Christmas and all that kind of stuff. So then it also gives us ways to film and uh, we get to interact with breeders and we can run events. And so all every piece pitches in. We just have to make sure that no one piece of this, you know, it's kind of a big business at this point. No one piece is siphoning off money disproportionately. Like, what do you mean this thing's losing us tons and tons of money? That's not good. The neighbor's cat ate all the extreme krill flake in the mailbox. We've had that happen, too. We have people that, uh, you know, and depending on the customer and all of that, sometimes we'll send some out, sometimes we won't. It just depends. Or we usually try to go, like, is there anything else you need? Like, if you order something else, we'll throw another one in, I guess. Because the shipping, a lot of, like, if you have a $5 product that, you know, like, you lost and you need a new one, the shipping for us is like $10. So we, we spend more on the shipping than we do the product. Have I ever used the Marina Slim 10, S15, or S20? Yes, I personally love mine. They're easy to service, good, good flow rates, and they have been running with no problems for many years. I just don't like that they're so skinny with the cartridge system. If they were a little bit fatter and sponges worked a little better, I'd like it a little more. They're not bad, though. But uh, they also don't ship very well. They're not the right type of plastic to be shipping around the world. What is RA slash RI bingo cards? Like, I know what a bingo card is, but RA 
return something? I'm not sure what that means. How many employees do you have? I'd have to put in passwords and uh, other stuff to get the official count, but I know it's more than 30, but probably less than 35. We're probably in that zone right now. I ordered Marison three times before I found where the hubby put it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Never believed I did not get it. Yeah, I've had that before. Like, I just had a book I ordered, and uh, I was like, it should be here by now. And then we found it, uh, or my wife found it a couple days ago, so I'm going to start reading it. But I have that. Have I swear I ordered that. Where did that go? What are they, oh, what do they call it? Am Amazonesia? I definitely run to that sometimes. Like, what did I even order? Or my big thing lately, I don't know what it is. I don't know if my brain is tired or... Amazon changed the process or what? I swear, like 20% of the time, I never click the final checkout button. I'm like, yes, this address. Yes, this credit card. Yes, this. And then there's like the final one. And I come back and I'm like, dang it, three days ago, I never clicked the final complete checkout button. Ugh. So then I, like, that's what happened. Yeah, that's what happened with these. When I went to order the, that's why it was a week delayed and we had two live streams. I never clicked the final, final. Yes, send me this. Oh, there's a ping pong. Uh, ball on my desk. All right. So one time an Amazon package was delivered with nothing in it already opened. I watched the cam footage and the employee clearly knew it was empty. Yep. That's why, like, so one of the things we do on our end that we, you know, we don't use it against the customer, but we make notes of it in our accounts is every package that's ever made we have a camera above every station so we can watch every item go in so we can one with 100 percent certainty know that item left our warehouse in the box now we know that it could get lost it could get chewed up in the mail something could happen we've had customers where it's like oh just a little part like falls off into their couch whatever it is but we can know we didn't make a mistake so we chalk it up to like something happened in the process because once it leaves our facility our influence on what actually happens is very small at that point. Like it's up to the carrier, it's up to the customer, all of that. But we know that we did our job 100% if it left our facility with the right amount of items and everything into it. And we just know after that, if there's a problem, that's, we chalk it up to cost of doing business, things are gonna go wrong, stuff gets stolen, stuff gets lost, stuff gets, every day there's like two or three packages returned to sender, person doesn't live here, uh, no one answered the door. And every time it's, the person does live there, but either USPS wrote that or they looked at the wrong, they went to the wrong place or something. And it's just, you know, cost of doing business. So, uh, let's see. Did you or someone else try pressing repash through a garlic press? I heard you and Dean talking about an old podcast. I never tried it, but you could probably make some spaghetti strings out of it. I've worked customer service before. I'm an easy customer. I try to be that too. I try to, I usually try to like, like right now I need to have like an epic battle with uh, Ryobi because my electric lawnmower doesn't work. I bought an electric lawnmower when we bought this house. So I bought it like last August. I mowed three times. And then when I tried to mow it the first time this year, it like all like either the charger doesn't work or the batteries are dead or whatever. I call up the company they say, hey, you got to call your local Home Depot. I call them and they go, no, 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 you got to get Ryobi to take care of this. And so it's been back and forth. And now we're at the point where I have to go rent a trailer and get a, a tow hitch put on like my van or something and bring it to a different city that I don't live in so that they can then send it away for four to six weeks to get fixed. And then I can get a, uh, a lot more that's going to work apparently. So... Once, once I think next week or something like that, once I'm a little bit free, I'm going to get uh, a buddy to help me move. So you got to get, I got to go rent a trailer. I got to get on the trailer. Then I got to drive it to another city to deliver it. And then hopefully in four to six weeks, I'll have a, uh, a, a electric riding lawnmower. And to me, I'm like enraged of like, all right, I've spent like $4,000 because I bought the like the the mulching and bagging kit and a trailer to pull behind this thing. And uh, I'm just like, how is it that I have to get a trailer hitch installed 
rent from Home Depot a trailer to put push my lawnmower onto it to drive back to Home Depot to give them. Like, so when your product breaks, it, it would be like it would be like uh, you know someone needing to return something to the co-op and like. Oh yeah, go ahead and bring that fish back. That's fine. Oh yeah, we sold you the wrong fish, or like, oh that fish is dead. But oh yeah, we need. You're gonna need a bag. Oh, you don't have a bag. Yeah, this bag's uh, forty bucks. We'll give you the bag. You know, it's like, but that doesn't make sense. So I'm irritated because uh, I was like, I told them on the phone, I was like, I don't have a trailer hitch, and I don't have a trailer. And they said, Oh well, you can uh, crate it and ship it back to us at your expense. And I was like, Oh, oh, that's that's the move we're doing right now. Okay, okay. So I'm pretty irritated that they're asking for a solution that I feel is unreasonable. Like, why isn't there, like, you delivered it to my house free of charge. If this thing is broken in well under a year, and, like, you know, I went through all the troubleshooting stuff with them, and the tech's like, yeah, uh, either your charger or your batteries are, are bad. And I was like, cool, send me out a charger. We'll try it. I uh, can't do that. You got to send it in. I was like, okay. So, you know, it's just one of those. I actually went and bought a charger myself. And uh, on eBay for 250 bucks, and that didn't fix the problem. The charger was bad, so this new charger does work. But I think the batteries are actually bad. And I looked it up online, and like, yeah, they're having tons of battery problems with these things. And uh, you know, it's just one of those like, uh, why is this got to be so hard? Like, why not? Like, why do you? Because it's it's just making me knowing like I will never buy a Ryobi product again. Like, your customer service has been so terrible. I feel. When in reality, they could make me a happy customer, and because I here's how I am, I go into it with like an even keel, like all right, maybe they'll take care of me. And if you do take care of me, I become like a very loyal customer. The easier you make it, like like if I had called up and they're like, yeah, we had a bad run of batteries, probably the batteries. I'll tell you what, uh, bring it in to the local Home Depot. I'm shipping the batteries now, um, and they'll install it, and you'll have it back in two days. Like that even sounds pretty good. Four to six weeks after, you know, at least I'd have to rent the trailer still and all that, but it's like, okay, I have it in two days. Four to six weeks, I'm midsummer. My lawn's going to, right now I'm going to pay someone, I'm paying a neighbor to mow the lawn because I don't have a way to mow the lawn. So I'm losing a hundred bucks every week to mow this lawn. Meanwhile, it's going to be, so that four to six weeks, minimum four to $600 out of my pocket to get it mowed. So it's just really irritating of like, yeah, is there no warranty? This is the warranty. The warranty is I have the option of shipping it back at my cost, crating it up and hiring an LTL company to come get it, or I can drive it to another city. I don't have a trailer hitch and I don't have a trailer, so I got to rent one and get a hitch installed to get that done. Those are my options with the warranty. And to me, I feel like that's not a warranty. That would be like, oh, you bought a flu light, it's not working? You have to walk it back to me. Like, no, you can't send it. No, that's, that's too easy. Like, you got to walk it to me. Like, that. okay, so here's what it'd be. It would be like, we only honor Fluval warranties in store. That's literally what it's like. Yep, you live in uh, Illinois? Well, guess what? You have to fly to Washington, come into the retail store. Oh yeah, that lights not good. Here, have another one. That's, that's a, I feel like I'm being held hostage because it's that crazy of like, what if I didn't own a car? I, could, I, could, I only own a bike, now what do I do? Right, like they just assume I have a truck, or I have a, a truck really, a vehicle with a hitch and a trailer, or a way to like get this pretty heavy because the lawnmower is really heavy with these giant batteries in it. Like we can't just lift it into the back of Bob's truck because we thought about that and then we were like, oh yeah, how do we get it in there? It's going to be crazy, crazy heavy. So it's irritating, real irritating. And I, I thought the whole point of it was like, I don't like mowing the lawn. I was like, let me just buy like a nice lawnmower. I'm going to spend too much money. And then Katie and I can both use it. I don't have to winterize it every month or every year where I got to take out, you know, I got to change oil. I got to stabilize the gas or take out the gas and just make this easy. And I really wanted it because it's like it's a golf cart um, because you can drive this thing for 10 hours without the blades being on because it's electric. So I was like, sweet, this will be perfect. Like I don't have to get a golf cart or anything on my property. People are asking why don't I return it? Because uh, you can only, I, we learned this with the pandemic actually, where we got, I got screwed. We got screwed out of $3,000 for our personal training. We prepaid personal training, right? With 24 hour fitness, how dare you? And uh, 
They closed down this, the, the 24 hour fitness in the city where we live. Currently, the closest one I could go to is 45 minutes away. So I could go there, right? And I can use up our training sessions that we bought. The problem is our trainer is no longer there. So I could drive 45 minutes to go to a trainer that I'd never trained with before, or my wife had never trained with before. And at the time, it was limited capacity, and I had to do all that. And they wouldn't refund any of our money. And so we just lost out on three grand, and they're claiming bankruptcy now and all of that. But here's how I know. You only have six months with all the credit card we have. You only have six months from the time you purchase something. Right? Six months from the time you purchase something to contest it. After six months, you're not allowed to contest it anymore. So we weren't allowed to contest that money, even though we never got to utilize it. So that was a straight up stole $3,000 from us. And then same with this lawnmower. I don't have the ability of like, just take it back. I'm done with this. Um, and I can't do a chargeback. So I basically am at the mercy of like, please just fix this. Please. I really would love, like, how I, how I would handle this. This is how I would handle it at this point if I was a Home Depot with Ryobi. I would be like, look, bring, bring this lawnmower in. And uh, here's your options. Like, we'll send you out a brand new one, right? And you can put it all together, which is a pain in the butt, by the way. I had to assemble this thing because it arrives in a crate. And it's already a pain in the butt. We'll send you out a new one. Or, like, uh, in four to six weeks, here's, uh, you know, we can have this one back to you fixed. And then give me, like, a, I don't know, a 20% off my next purchase or, I don't know, something. Like, something that makes me think they even care because they don't care right now. They're just like, you know, whenever you tell someone like, well, you can spend a thousand dollars, ship it back to us. <laughs> we know you're not going to do that. Like you're just, you just know, you just know that they don't care. So, yeah. I mean, I just, and the worst part was like Ryobi is like, no, no, they fix them on site. And then you call up the place and John, who I talked to, he's like, we don't fix them here. We send them out. And I'm like, great. And he's like, you should really be trying to find a certified Ryobi uh, uh, like technician station. And so then I call them back and they're like, yeah, there's none in your state. You bring it back to a Home Depot. And I can't, I can, you can only bring it back to a Home Depot that does tool rentals because they'll have one guy at the tool rental center that can at least look at it and at least say, yeah, this needs to go out. So it's not just like, you know, because I'm sure there's, you know, just like, five old people that bring it back like this thing doesn't work did he turn the key you know like this thing legit doesn't work it's just super irritating that half my summer is going to be wasted on not being able to take care of my own property i tried to buy what i thought would be a good tool i really wanted it to uh i really wanted it to be just easy like i someone else was listing high-end uh like Husqvarna and troy built and kawasaki yes uh, part of the problem is I really wanted it to be electric because my wife was going to, was pitching in on the mowing and the easier I could make it. And at the time when I bought the mower, we thought we were going to be able to get a Tesla solar roof. And so that I could be super green and just collect the energy, recharge my mower and mow my lawn. That was the ultimate goal. Turns out our roof was leaking. You guys heard all about that. And so we had to get a different roof. So our solar panel thing hasn't worked out yet. And I got a lawnmower that really sucks because if these batteries are bad, like that's way worse for the environment than the gas I was going to run on a lawnmower. So it, it's just not working out at all, and it's super disappointing. And uh, so that'll be the next saga to uh, to do, I guess. And we would have used it yesterday. We literally would have used the lawnmower because we were cutting up some fallen trees or whatever on the uh, the property and moving it near the fire pit where everyone was. Instead, we lugged it by hand on this cart, but the whole point was, ah, load it in the back of the thing, drive it right over, have fun. Great. Yeah. By the way, that's the first Ryobi thing I'd ever bought in my life. Also, turns out it's going to be the last. <laughs> yeah. Because I always thought Ryobi was a, uh, a low-end brand. I was like, ah, yeah. But they were getting good reviews, and people were like, I love it. And I was like, all right, I'll give it a try. Plus, there wasn't a lot of electric only uh riding lawnmowers i watched a ton of videos by the way like i i don't take a 
a near four thousand dollar riding lawnmower purchase lightly. Like I was like, let's invest in this. We got the property. There's way too much grass. Let's try to make this as painless as possible. Boom, didn't work out. Any tips on converting garden center plants? I got creeping Jenny. Uh, I would like to add it to my tank. What I would do is get yourself uh, the baskets that are, um, like, you know, you can stick them in your, your, your shower or something like that, and they can hold stuff. Get one of those and stick it on the inside of your tank towards the top and plant it there. And it'll, some of it will grow out, but then some of it will convert underwater and grow underwater probably for you, too. So bought a railway push mower and got a bad battery with it. Gave me the runaround too, so I just ate the cost of a new battery. Yeah. Great. I should I should I should have asked for I should have like what do you guys think of your Ryobi uh uh your Ryobi riding lawnmowers? I love my electric push mower. It's a snapper and I love that thing. The same battery works for our weed eater, our brush trimmer our chainsaw, I got an electric chainsaw. Yes, I'm that nerdy. And the same, these big batteries work for all of them. It's amazing. And I just, I had such a good experience with the snapper line of push mower and all these tools. And I was like, great, let's go with an electric riding lawnmower. This is going to be great. Sounds too good to be true. Too good to be true. I feel your solar pain waiting six months now just for, uh, wait. Now for just charging over my meter? Yeah. Oh, changing over the meter. Not even charging, changing over the meter. Yeah, it's it's a long process. I just, I don't know. I, I try to invest some of the money into like, let's be more sustainable where we can. That's, that's my whole goal of like, all right, let's take one actionable step to maybe a little bit better. Maybe. It didn't work out this way. It's actually worse. Snapper is high. I know. Snapper is high end, but they don't make a riding lawnmower, so I was like, okay. Yeah. Corey, clear, wait, needs a clear bottom boat for the pond? Yeah, maybe. Do you like to have a series of sports events? Yeah, kind of. It's been, it's been a lot. It's been hard to do this whole move and just, there's like so many things went wrong in this room or this building and the house and it just, yeah, it, it's just one of those, like, it, the good news is we're going to get all this stuff out of the way and we're going to be golden. That's what's, you know, it's like, all right, well, we're going to have a house that, you know, everything's fixed and nothing's wrong and same with the studio and we'll have a lawnmower that can cut grass and, uh, you know, and then I can focus on doing my job and making videos and hanging out with you guys. But to get there, it's been pretty painful. I'm like, ugh, it's got to deal with all this. In 10 years, how automated do you see the aquarium hobby? Um, I don't think much more automated than it is now. I think we'll get uh, some more onboard, like pH monitors, TDS monitors, some of that kind of stuff. But because fish are so unique, like we've had dogs forever and dogs are a way bigger industry and we're not really automating that even. Like, yeah, we can have an auto feeder, but you still got to interact with the pet and it can still like... You can't have something that cleans up dog hair because it's like, oh, yeah, it cleans up dog hair. Like, oh, if your dog pooped on the floor, it's going to smear it around, right? So you can only, I think, get so automated of like, because there's still disease with fish. There's still fish, give birth to fish, fish. I, I think you could like probably 100% automate. Here it is. I have a 200-gallon tank with one Oscar, auto feeder, auto water change, all of that. You could probably automate that 100%, but we as hobbyists, like to tinker and do different combos and all that. So once you start combining stuff, I think it's going to make uh, I think it's going to make things a lot harder. <laughs> Got to get goats. And we have neighbors that have goats and stuff. We have they have pygmy goats and uh, what do we what do we call them? Bloat the goat because he's kind of this fat little goat. And then I can't remember what the other one is. Like gloat? No. It's bloat and something else, so we call them. We drive by them like every time we leave the house, and they're just these cute little funny fat goats, pygmy goats. Did your koi come up when you feed them yet? Nope, not yet. Honestly, I haven't fed them yet. They there's so many bugs in there. I know they're chowing down, uh, but yes, it's my food has been sitting at the old house, and every time I go, I forgot to get it. So now I've got the food. It's in my garage. I just got to get it down there, which. 
I got to carry it. I was busy yesterday. I, I, I brought it yesterday afternoon. So I was literally, I was moving stuff from my old house to the new house yesterday still. There's still like one small trip to do. Moved eight times in 12 years. Ugh. Ah. Don't even have time to get stuff out. Whoa. This is a new YouTube thing, I think. Does it show you guys this? It says, someone just bought a unisex aquarium co-op 3XL shirt in lime. That's got to be brand new. Or, that's either brand new, or it's the first time anyone has ever bought one of those shirts. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Let me, I'll put up a link. We'll see if anyone else buys it, if it does it again. Let me see. Click in. Let's, let's put up, uh, let's see, they bought Murphy shirt. Let me find it. I'm looking, I'm looking. Why can't I find it? Maybe it's this one. Let's try this one. There we go. We're going to pin this merchandise. Try new things. Yeah, you guys see it too. Interesting. I think that's... Has anyone ever seen that in someone else's live stream? I think that's a, a new thing. I don't know. I were 10 Corys, Panda and Julii. Do I need to quarantine them, or is that bad because of the poison they release when stressed out? No, I would quarantine. I've never seen the poison actually have an effect on the fish in my own, and I've billions, uh, not billions, like way too many Corydoras have been in my possession and my store. I hadn't actually uh, seen that problem. I know they can do it. Physically, like, it can be done. It's been proven. But I think you're much better off quarantining than you are being afraid of that. Like, you got way more chance of them bringing a disease than them using that toxin. Yeah, that stinks. Nearly 4K for a rider, electric or not. I've gone with a real brand like John Deere or Simplicity. Yeah, I know. I, I had this utopia in my mind of let's grab sunlight, recharge everything, and just be like extra good for nature and it just totally did not work out and i yeah i mean not only is nature gonna pay for it if those batteries are bad but i paid for it financially too it just i mean i would love it if i return that mower and they're like here's your money back sir i'd be like yeah i'm gonna buy i, I you know i'm gonna buy the opposite of that mower but you know i'm kind of one of those like mm, i guess i'm stuck in this like like i'm not gonna give it up it's a brand new mower Mm. What's the best way to treat an Episto that has a... Oh, that is a belly slider. He got over an eye infection a few months back and has been a belly slider ever since. Well, if they have a problem with their swim bladder, it's unlikely you're ever going to be able to repair it. So you just treat them like a normal fish. They'll eat and... Uh, yeah, that's, that's really all you can do. They can live pretty long lives normally unless they're getting beat up or something. Corys and poison? Yeah, they have a toxin they can release when stressed. Uh, it's being studied by Eric... Uh, what's his name? Eric... I can't remember. Is he at the University of Davis? I don't know. I'll probably get him... I'll try to get him for the members only talks. Because um, it's a real nerdy subject. But basically what they have to do is they get some Corydoras and then they basically like agitate them and like keep like stressing them out until they release a the toxin and then they can put it under a microscope and study it and they can measure like what levels become toxic to the fish and all that kind of stuff and what happens and uh eric thompson's his name uh, and it's 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 like fascinating but at the same time uh i've never seen it in person and so like sometimes they say like well maybe you try to stress them out so they release the toxin then put them uh in the bag but i'm like why are you creating unnecessary stress and yeah i don't know so it'd be you know and he's still they're still learning more about it he's using uh like students and they're doing research papers on it and that kind of stuff so it's still uh being studied really well, let's see here i've got an understock 75 mostly with neons it's cycled 
but I've had some die off. Parameters are good. I have an oil slick that won't go away. I'm using a skimmer with carbon. 75, mostly. Uh, what are you feeding? Are you feeding like freeze dried blood worms or, or mice shrimp? Those have a lot of oils in them and they will uh, um, get that oil slick on the top for you. In Irene's latest video, her eco-complete got messed up. Is there a way to salvage substrates when that happens? I don't know. I haven't watched that video yet. So I know there was like a toxin in there, but I don't know uh, what it is. So I, I'm not 100% sure, but I, without watching the video, here's my guess. Here's how I would try it. I would, um, like, maybe you put that in a bucket or something like that, and you put a hose in it, and you turn the hose on, let it run for five minutes every day for like a couple of weeks and that will like so what'll happen is it'll fill the water fill the bucket with water you'll be able to leach out some of the stuff into the water and then you turn on again for five minutes the next day so that water goes out and it can basically keep leaching out whatever's in there it'll take out all the minerals and stuff that are in the eco complete or any fertilizer that's absorbed and that kind of stuff but uh, hopefully it'll get out the toxin but depending on what the toxin is if it's really bad stuff it's probably less work and you don't want to jeopardize more lives and you would just go okay well I'll mix that into my garden bed or whatever I'm going to do, and I'll just buy some new stuff. But yeah, that's um, that's the way I would I would do it without watching the video. I don't know yet. What happens if I put my hand in Ladybird's tank? Will she immediately chomp? No, she won't. She's actually really scared. She's a scaredy cat. Uh, like when Candy Candy got to feed her yesterday, and. Uh, you know, at first she's just like, oh, she kind of does this like, I'm backing up. And then after you stand there a little bit, she's like, okay, maybe I will eat some of these clams. Uh, so she's pretty skittish. I've, I've never had any puffer, uh, Mabu puffer come after me aggressively, but, you know, maybe it's because I spend a lot of time with them. I don't know. Irene had bad root tabs. Oh. Huh. Three root tabs she got on Etsy. Yikes, I don't know. I guess I would see what the, what the toxic chemical was. China has thousands of parked cars because batteries are too expensive and batteries cannot go to the landfill. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know enough about batteries. I assume you can, like, what am I trying to say? refresh them okay that can happen with like the lead batteries right lead acid batteries you can because that's why you trade them back in and then they can be because what i have to do like the re-electrolysis process on the lead part i don't know i don't know enough about batteries mostly like i wanted the slight advantage in my mind at least of like oh it's better for the environment but really I'm really bad at remembering putting fuel stabilizer draining oil and fuel tanks like an overwintering stuff because it's always like, I need to do that. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh God, it's a blizzard. Why didn't I do that sooner? And so I was like, it's been really nice to have my electric mower and not to worry about any of that. Like, oh yeah, because it's hard enough to get time to mow. So I said, yeah, I just go out there, I mow, done. Not after like, oh, I got the gas. Oh, I forgot this. Oh, I did that. Osmocote tabs, why wouldn't Irene use co-op tabs? I don't know. She tests a lot of other products. Like a lot of companies reach out to her and be like, you want to test the thing? And she'll test a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm all for it. Like, why not? If I'm willing to give it to you for free, try it. I mean, this one obviously didn't work out for her. Anne's got to go to work. Well, don't feel too bad, Anne. I'm at work right now. What's my recommendation for a tank for a seven-year-old? He's very interested in our display tank, and we want to get him something easy to introduce him to the hobby. Um, I would try and do, like, some platies, maybe. You're going to get two avenues. You're going to get the, I want to put all the things in my tank avenue. And then you can get, like, the, oh, we're having babies. That's fun. Let's raise them up, name them, all of that. Um, you know, with platies and that kind of stuff, you do the right thing. You still put, like, frogs in there and all the fun stuff. And you'll still get some babies, but most babies will get eaten probably, which is fine. Um, yeah, that's probably what I would do. And you got to remember the attention spans can be long or short. Sometimes they get really into it. They might be into it for a year, and then they're not so into it. And don't treat that as a fault. They, a lot of times, will come back to it. 
or they get bored. Like I, I only enjoy fishing a tank for maybe a few years and then I want to do something new. So maybe, you know, when they get bored of it, maybe you got to go, Hey, do you want to try, we'll add these fish to my main tank or we'll see if the pest will take them back. We'll try a new type of aquarium or, you know, something like that. Keep me interested. I think learning, or you could also like donate those fish back. And then if it's legal, you can go collect some, you know, maybe some wild stuff where you're from and keep some natives, get out in nature and just keep trying to make it like a, an interactive, like te use it like a teaching. Like it's almost like I'm going to take aquarium class, find different things to teach about it and learn. We run very little sand. Will an Amazon sword be able to survive if it's anchored by choya wood? Will easy green water column for it make it easy to thrive or survive without substrate? Um, no, nah, it really wants to feed from the roots. I would, I would just keep it in the pot if you could. I mean, you can use one of our uh, easy planters, but if you just keep it in the pot and keep putting root tabs in that, that would work. But real light sand and no root tabs, it's going to struggle pretty hard, I think, for you. You could do a, 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 a terracotta or ceramic pot too. Oh, it says Irene ordered a plant and she got root tabs instead. Used them because she didn't want to waste them. She never got the plant she ordered either. Well, there you go. That's why she had those ones, not the co-op ones. And I, I always recommend that, by the way, is use what you got. So often people are like, should I buy this filter? Should I switch? You know, it's like, well, use what you got first. Like, that's free. And then, uh, you know, go ahead and, you know, buy something else if you want. Any love on that snail question? I have ram horn snails uh, on the baby train, a 55-gallon guppy tank. The assassin snail will take care of them. Or am I trading problems? Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, if you add assassin snails, they, they could breed up, especially if there's a lot of leftover food. But a lot of times you could, if you don't feed them enough food, the assassins will assassin each other. And so if you can keep the food level down low enough, you won't have nearly as many rams or nearly as many assassins as you would rams horns but i like rams horns you know if you have way too many rams horns usually it's saying you got too much food going in anyway so you got to be careful all right it is 105 i think it's been almost three hours i should probably call this because i still gotta install my brine shrimp hatcheries and stuff we got 31 new members so that's awesome someone bought a shirt that's cool too we got to see that new technique um we got nikki foo foo donating 20 dollars. well thank you very much um yeah if you're watching this in the in the future become a member if you haven't already if you want to see some of the new stuff we got coming out otherwise we'll keep seeing you in the next videos and keep hanging out go ahead and leave comments i still try to answer uh comments every day join us on the forum make sure you sign up for text messages if you want to know when we go live um yeah other than that it's Sunday. Have a good day. Spend some time in your fish room. Order all the stuff that we sell. That's always good when you do that. And, uh, oh no, Nikki Fufu just got off work. Well, you're going to have to watch the replay, Nikki. If I always stayed on when someone came in, I would never get off of here. But, yes, I'm going to try and drill in my brain shrimp hatcheries. Use a level so that way he doesn't trigger Dean when he shows up. And, uh, yeah, thanks to everyone. And uh, welcome to Washington Candy. I'm going to hit that done button as soon as I can find it. Bye-bye, everyone. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Now i got to wait because my computer's like lagging today for some reason. Now it's the awkward ending. Super awkward. There we go. All right, now I'm hitting the button. It's going to be a little bit. And we're done.